I, they just they just made a montage of all the unrelated things that are happening yes. in this scene. Yes! So clearly they were just like, fuck, did we not write any dialogue for a bunch of these scenes? It's a lot <laughs> that we didn't write. So montage for this whole thing? Great. Yeah. What's the, what's the difference between a montage and just security camera footage? Nothing? <laughs> okay, nothing. <laughs> Great. Yeah, <laughs> right, right. <laughs> The angle is the angle, right? Yeah, there's color. Yeah, they, they, they did this in color. <laughs> That's the difference. <laughs> God awful movie. 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 Welcome back to the Gamcast, where each week we sample another selection from Christian cinema because we're pretty sure it counts as time served if we ever get convicted of anything. I'm your host, No Illusions, mm-hmm. and sitting 700 miles to my immediate left is my good friend, Heath Enright. Heath, welcome back. Thanks, Noah. So uh, I just flew in from Golgotha. Man, are my arms <laughs> sore <laughs> from the crucifixion. Yeah, right. right? No, it's religious and it's a joke. Right? Yeah. Yeah, you're in the fucking spirit. There are some comedians <laughs> in this thing we're about to talk about. Comedians. Are there? Get ready. All right. Mm. Now, unfortunately, Eli is unable to join us this week. That's We're down one comedian. His birthday was two days ago. He's still coming to grips with not being able to say early 30s anymore. But we did bring along a guest masochist. Aaron Rabinowitz is the co-host of the Embrace the Void podcast and Philosophers in Space. He's a person who studies Ooh. thinking. And still doesn't know enough about it to say no when we invite him on this show. Aaron, welcome back. Yeah, uh, it's good to be back. I don't have a punchline and neither does this fucking movie. Well, there you go. (laughs) Stay on theme. Yeah, sorry, guys. We can't be funny this week or we'd be uh, betraying sort of the the whole concept of this film. Speaking of which, uh, tell us, Heath, what will we be breaking down today? We watched Christianity Reference. (laughs) Um, it's, it's actually called, can I get a witness protection, oh. which mm. I, <laughs> I kind of like the title. It peaks um, at the title. It does peak at the title. <laughs> it, it, yeah, it's, it's the story of what happens when a Christian hack comedian turns the tight five he's been doing for 30 <laughs> years into a feature length motion picture. <laughs> uh. It's every single moment is a terrible, terrible bit from like a summer camp talent show except it's a grown-up it's all yeah. grown-ups and they all tried so goddamn hard yeah and if they weren't we'd, we'd still make fun of them yeah it's terrible the, mm-hmm. the movie should be called like christian people walk like this but <laughs> atheist people walk like this it's so bad we're just like christianity boo whoop, the movie. Yeah. <laughs> and aaron how bad was this movie uh, well, uh, if you miss Eli being here to sex pervert up the place, but you hate how he's always including punchlines with his jokes, you're going to love this movie. <laughs> when you sent the invite, I was really curious because I was like, what could you have found to top racist Edison cult and demon alien fucking? And it turns out the answer is not this movie. No, no, no. not topping. <laughs> no, this movie is so bad it doesn't warn a Rotten Tomatoes page. Which It doesn't have one. That's true. I tried to find it. <laughs> Wit- witless protection starring Larry the fucking cable guy and <laughs> Jenny McCarthy has a has a Rotten uh, Tomatoes page. I'm just saying. All I could find was Medea's witness protection or something mm-hmm. like some Tyler Perry thing was that also time, yeah. Google it. This is sub Tyler Perry and Larry the cable guy. Yeah. I was actually trying to find out how much money they made and it, 67 million dollars popped up and I was like, "Oh my god, that's Tyler Perry." Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I felt good that Tyler Perry made 67 yeah. million dollars. It's not a good sign. <laughs> right. <laughs> All right, so I got to say I'm going to jump off subject here. Uh, I want to offer a quick correction about something that we said last week. Keith, you're uh, in the clear on this. You're off the hook. You weren't here last week. Uh, but we reviewed Pilgrim's Progress. Uh, And during that review, we noted that the only black guy in the movie played the evil monster. Mm -hmm. All right. So standard this week, we got a correction from the film's director and writer who wrote that, you know, it it, it, a really actually a a pretty good natured email, given all the shit we said. But he pointed out that the dude playing Apollyon was not a black. He's not. That's not a black guy. I would have been able to tell you. Yeah, no, no. Apparently, yeah, because you can smell your own. Apparently, he said he was so white, he got sunburned through his spandex outfit. (laughs) Yeah, our apologies. You did not use your only black friend to play the monster. You used a white guy in blackface (laughs) doing a black voice. 
Mm. And you don't have any black correction. friends. Yeah, good correction. Is this a win for you? Did you win? So it's a weird flex, but I'll give it to him. I, Sorry yeah. about our. Oh, no, the, the email was so funny. It's like, well, you guys didn't say anything at all about my shit cinematography. You must have been impressed. I'm like, yeah, buddy, that's what it was. We were it wasn't really a lack impressed. of time. Yeah. <laughs> so it wasn't that we're trying to keep this under three hours. It was blackface. Get your facts straight. What? <laughs> Mm. All right, so shifting gears back to this one, is there anything you guys want to nominate this one for being the best at being the worst at? I'll say this is best at being the worst at how many terrible shticks it packs into one oh movie. This movie God. is 99% shtick, and yep. I'm, I'm sorry that you're going to hear that word like 300 times over the course of this recording because there is no other way to describe this movie but just shtick no. after shtick after shtick. Yeah, no, a fucking control so F on rough. shtick or shenanigans on our notes is just going to turn up about 300 yeah. hits, yeah. I think you noted a few gags, which I'll give you. They were yep. There were a few gags that are not quite shticks, but it was yep. so good. Yeah, you want to mix it up. <laughs> gag, shtick, shtick, gag, gag, shtick, shtick, shenanigans, yeah. How many ways yeah. can you put those two together? Yeah. And it's not the kind of gag and shtick that like the BDSM fans are thinking is going to be a really good time. It's the other kind that's not fun. It's not. Yeah. Nope. You gotta you gotta tune into the Patreon only secular bonuses to get that one. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I'm going best worst makeover. And I'm not, by the way, I'm not talking about you know how they'll do a makeover in a movie and it'll be a pretty girl and then it's a pretty girl without glasses. They mm -hmm. do that in this movie, right? But mm -hmm. I'm not talking about that one. I'm talking about when they do the equivalent of that to a church. <laughs> <laughs> So I feel like when they de atheist. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I feel like this movie actually might take both first and second place in this category. Now that I think about yeah. it, uh, it's it's a long walk to get to the idea that the atheists are the ones making people cover up. But they really yeah. they do put in the effort on that. I'll give you that. <laughs> All right. I, I'm going to go with best worst Kickstarter page. Oh, really? This is amazing. The, le the level of incompetence is fucking priceless. J okay, so first of all, it's a Kickstarter page to make more money for this movie. They didn't know how to resize their stupid poster image, so you can't even see the whole title <laughs> on the front page of the Kickstarter's graphic. Amazing. It doesn't fit. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They couldn't resize a graphic. <laughs> Boy, does that explain the credits. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. They also claim to be two thirds of the way there with the budget because, you know, they had 85 grand and they only needed 15 <gasps> grand more. You know, two thirds. <laughs> mm. And, mm. There's a video that accompanies this Kickstarter with clips from the live recording that they did like a live reading of the script before they'd put it all together. And they did this at a church. So it's just five minutes. This stupid video. It's just Christian plants. So clearly fake laughing so hard at every single line in this movie. You guys saw this movie. <laughs> right, yeah. Yeah. God. And I, I, I got to tell you a few more things about this. It's ridiculous. <laughs> also during the video, at one point, the writer says, I'm just like Judd Apatow. And uh, my cast is just like, you know, the Judd Apatow crew. Like uh, Jason Siegel and Seth Rogen and Jonah Hill and <laughs> Linda Cardellini and James Franco. <laughs> Basically the same yeah. thing. He, mm -hmm. he made these people famous, just like that group of people I named. Mm -hmm. And um, in their little blurb, they brag about how their producer is from the Weinstein Company. So that was fun. <laughs> mm. <laughs> wow. And this, this is my favorite part. Here's their tier system for the Kickstarter. Oh, good. For $25, you get the DVD. <laughs> this is a 2016 movie. Mm -hmm. The DVD. Yep. yep. For $50, you get a signed picture of the cast. And then right after that, it just says, okay, with an exclamation. Don't know why. <laughs> Fill in the blank for later, I think. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. And then for 100 you get all that plus a free T-shirt. There's a disclaimer, though. Not necessarily a T-shirt that has anything to do with the film. Just, just any T-shirt. <laughs> just a white T-shirt they're going to send you. Oh Maybe. My God. You don't know what color. It's just has, <laughs> it just has to be a t-shirt, technically. How great what? would it be if they accidentally sent some, like, death metal t-shirts? Yeah, like, right. Satan just all over the front of those t-shirts. Hey, man. I, hey, guys, if you're listening, I have some t-shirts I can donate if you still have to make good on a few of those. There yeah. you go. Yeah. And this, th this last part, 
for $500. This is like my favorite and least favorite part of this. For $500, you're in the movie. And I cannot believe we missed the chance to be in this fucking movie. We could have been in this movie. $500. We could have been in the movie. I do we know? Do, do you know if anyone paid $500 and is one of the people in this movie that um, we watched? Yeah, I'm pretty sure the entire cast did that. <laughs> That would explain an awful lot. Yeah, uh, it would. There's no other explanation except for Judd Apatow, because obviously he's he's yeah. the one bringing the talent. Um, he was he's the, he's got the vision on the giant vision board that shows up in this movie. <laughs> he paid him five hundred dollars to not be involved in their Kickstarter, and they didn't take him up on it. Apparently, I wonder. You know, like as they were like plotting out this movie, was he like forcing them to all pick? members of the Judd Apatow team were like, no. Yeah, right, right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, he's, I'm, I'm going to be guy. Paul Rudd. I'm obviously <laughs> Paul Rudd. I'm thin Jonah Hill. I'm svelte Jonah Hill. You're being a dick. You don't get to be Jonah Hill just because you're large, dude. That's not cool. He's lost a lot of weight. <laughs> I'm post-Oscar Jonah Hill. <laughs> Fuck you. All right. Well, I'll tell you what. We've got a lot of banana peels to slip on, so we're going to take a minute to slap on our knee pads. And when we come back, we'll dive into all the wacky shenanigans. Hey, there's one that are, can I get a witness protection? <laughs> Such a good name. <laughs> all right, fellas. I don't have a lot of time, so pitch me this movie quick. All right. No problem. It's only going to take uh, six words. Well, not counting those ones. Right. No. Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. Um, it would it's be confusing. Uh, it would be 13 if you 13, counted those ones, yep. plus plus these ones, I guess. Well, now, yeah. Guys, okay. guys. Oh, right. Okay. So here's the six words. Can I get a witness protection? Protection. <laughs> what What does that mean? It's well, it's uh, like a like a pun. Well, mm. it's not a pun. No, no, no. But it's but it's like a pun. So it's like okay. It's like can I get a witness and witness protection? But like mm. it smooshed t- together, together, so, kind of like a, a portmanteau, but not. Yeah, but not one. You but know, not not right. Exactly, not one. It's like a um, before and after. No, yeah. no, no. All right, I get In what you're gym. going for, but how is that a movie pitch? Right. Well, yeah, it'll be religious, right? Because it's, it's a Christian movie, and then there'll be like FBI type stuff because that'll be in the title, the witness protection. Should we stop selling? So what, what's the plot? Right. So, oh. so, so there'd be a, a guy who's in witness protection, which, which is already funny. And then he's, um, he's also religious. Religious. How is this a movie? Uh, somebody will fall down or something in it. Oh, yeah. It's a comedy. Did we say that? Sh- sure. Why not? You know, a meeting like this must have actually happened. Yep. And we're back for the breakdown, and we're going to open up on a, a title that's like kind of a blink and you'll miss it admission that this movie has a lower budget than this podcast episode. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. This was confusing. I was like, okay, so I'm about to watch a James Bond episode of I Dream of Jesus. <laughs> mm-hmm. Plus, Jesus. Great. Yeah, I was initially I very no confused idea. because there was no Harrison Ford. Uh, all I had was <laughs> pale face Justin Trudeau, uh, yes. or maybe maybe I don't know, a slightly less attractive Dennis from It's Always Sunny in Philly. I, I had him down as destitute man's <laughs> Paul Rudd. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I think Justin Trudeau is pale faced Justin Trudeau. Yeah, especially. Just, well, yeah. Especially sometimes. Now, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Also, real quick detail on the intro: we get some of the cast, and um, Robert G. Lee is. <laughs> One of the cast members. So he was, hmm. he was cool. He was like, I'm a couple letters away. It's yeah, no, it's, it's, it's art. Yeah. <laughs> and he's actually, he's the writer and hack comedian who made this whole thing happen. Oh. That's hmm. the guy. So he's and, the yeah. one chiefly to blame. And it's also Robert E. Lee in hiding, apparently. <laughs> well, yeah, like I, maybe it's maybe it's Robert E. Lee just wanting to make sure that the Civil War wasn't the worst thing he was known for. There you go. <laughs> I'm by that. Yeah, we get introduced to a couple of the characters who are like we already understand their entire personalities from how they're portrayed in these three seconds. Like we get high maintenance girlfriend number five, 
Um, mm. We get what, what looks <laughs> yeah. like it's going to be Eli doing a Michael Keaton impression, which explains, <laughs> I guess, why he had to recuse himself from this particular episode. Yeah, no, right. One single black guy, of course, standard. There's another one who doesn't, I think, show up in the intro credits. So, oh, like, I thought that's what you meant by Justin Trudeau. I was confused. Okay, you're, no, you're right. I meant the <laughs> other, the other <laughs> black-faced individual. Got it. Yeah, but from the ass, they both look the same, though. That's true. Yeah, yeah. I should have been clearer on that. That's fair. All right. Both attractive men, no question. <laughs> so the credits end, and at this point, we were like, oh, thank God, those credits are over. We will miss them for the rest of the fucking movie. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That was the best part. Yep, that was the high point. Uh, so we're going to open up on shtick. Obviously, mm -hmm. right? So we got the uh, there's a, a marriage counselor giving some advice to an engaged couple, but when we first see him, he does the spinny chair thing, but his chair spins too fast, too <laughs> it keeps going. It's the he's, best. <laughs> and, and he doesn't nail it, right? Like, he, you see him having to push himself along to make the gag work with his feet. Mm -hmm. I went mm -hmm. too short, too far now. It's right. <laughs> I have it right and back. Nailed it. I, I, I genuinely laughed at that. This is that was like the best opening of any movie we've done. Yeah. And I was all optimistic. I was like, cool, <laughs> good title. Great before and after from wheel of fortune. And then the spinny chair thing downhill. Yeah. Not, not yeah. a good idea to be it's, optimistic. It's really the only that. shtick that goes too far in this movie and that it literally, the chair goes too far. It's <laughs> everything else, like half a step towards being a joke. Yeah. Right. Right. No, they, they pull up short on almost every joke in this fucking movie. Yeah. yeah, and I have a question for the professionals here. What percentage of the movies that y'all watch use shitty framing devices to fill time? Because I feel like I, I feel like it's <laughs> at, at least fifty percent of the ones that I've been here for, and one of the other ones didn't even have a plot. And it's basically like every paper I read in undergrad and college, where it's just yes, like, yes, <laughs> yes, yes. It's the wide time. margins of Christian cinema. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Yeah, the preponderance of evidence suggests that this intro is going great and we are going to have a movie after this feature link. The Webster's Dictionary defines introduction okay. scene as, yeah. yeah, basically. I would say a good chunk, although this movie had a nice, strong, full-length, 80-minute Christian movie without the framing. So, like, they were fine. I don't know why they... They could have just tell your story. Just go into your 80 minute movie. Well, yep. especially when like the whole conceit, I think, of the story is, boy, is this a boring story that a couple of people wouldn't want to sit through? Right. Like, isn't that what the entire movie is about? Two people being forced to listen to this stupid fucking story. Oh, it's an oh, it's an analogy for marriage. The whole thing is <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> genius. But it's not really good signaling. Marriage is a long, annoying story that you have to listen to. If you're trying to convert people to your religion, though, opening with a framing device of two people desperately wanting to escape the framing device does not <laughs> seem like a good model for converting people. Like, right. they are, they Again, <laughs> analogy for marriage. I think it's perfect. All right. I'm very happy. But we do get a little signaling. That it's that it is a Christian movie because uh, part of the information we get in this terrible or opening framing device is that he like explains that it's going to be about two individuals who have jobs and one of them's a woman having a woman job and like <laughs> he just like randomly scoffs at the idea that this woman has autonomy because again Christianity yeah yep that all day. What a large portion of that movie, this movie that will fill. Yeah, exactly. So he's like, yeah, she had some weird design bullshit. Pff, no penis. <laughs> Boo. He had a trucking company, though. He he wore the pants. Uh, family. Uh, he, he trucked entire stone penises. <laughs> chiseled from granite. <laughs> Super manly. Right. She's just like dressing up like. V smelled into vaginas or something She's making vaginas on walls or something like women do when they're designing just uh, um, Keith paintings everywhere <laughs> emotional manufacturer boo fake <laughs> right, just, yeah. she just throws crystals around rooms for a living <laughs> bunch of bullshit also by the way just real quick th this guy the marriage counselor who's going to be like nine other jobs in this <laughs> stupid church we're about to find out He's the funny friend. Yep. You know what I mean? So like this terrible comedian was like, you guys know fucking funny Steve, right? My buddy, funny Steve. He's, he's always telling funny shenanigans stories at Applebee's after church. Yeah. He's going to be like one of the major characters in this movie. And he's horrific. Yeah. Every I want to punch him the entire time. I was furious. Also, he has serial killer eyes, right? 
Yeah, he's definitely yep, Dark body. Universe Eli, and it's yeah, like, serial right. killer resting body. Also. <laughs> I like Dark Universe Eli. Yeah, definitely yeah. Dark Universe Eli. <laughs> <laughs> no punchlines, but a lot of really wanting to murder, rape somebody. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right, so now we're going to fade from this guy telling us that story into that story in what I hoped at the time was a sign we'd never have to see that fucking actor again. I was wrong. No. Deeply wrong. But the story is that one night, the husband in this couple was working late and heard some gangsters doing some gangster shit, specifically killing a dude with a, a space gun. A turret-mounted machine gun <laughs> and a rocket launcher. Oh, come on. Don't like, exaggerate. Hello, we're from the real mafia. This is our turret mounted machine. Did you bring it in? Roll it in. Fuck. I was saying it and now I look dumb. Just give me a minute. We're going to murder you. Y'all aren't, uh, y'all aren't big first person shooter kind of guys, are you? It's, uh, those were clearly SMGs that they unloaded the entire clip of. Oh, and, like, you know, all right. Me, like, you know, it, clearly, like, whatever is going on is they, like, the other people have some sort of shield buff and they yep, absolutely right. should have switched to shock weapons. Like, you, <laughs> if you're using that many standard bullets yeah. on someone, you're just doing it wrong, you noobs. <laughs> this is like the original RCP 90. That's like, it's got like a room full of tubes behind it. Like the first computer and like punch cards. Did you steal that from James Bond Goldeneye? Like what's going on here? I did. Thank you. Good, good pickup. It's a great weapon in that game. So RCP 90. The enemy was clearly on I'm job, so but that's right why now. I took so many shots. I would like to kiss down. you right on the mouth right now. <laughs> I'm picking up what you're putting down. You know, you know me, we can be All in right. a virtual world. I was putting sex it down anytime. pretty fucking hard. Good. Yeah. All right, so the key is, though, is that he saw some gangsters doing gangster shit. So he runs home, and he has to, like, gather up all his belongings to go into witness protection. But funnily, right? Yep, shtick counter. We're going to say funnily? That's what they're going for. <laughs> Benefit of the doubt. That's what they thought this was. Yeah, well, he, like, he runs in, and he starts just grabbing art. He's just, like, grabbing art off of surfaces. And, like, yeah. I want him, like, halfway through the shtick to, like, drop all of the art and just start grabbing, like, sex toys and drug paraphernalia. That's where they needed to <laughs> go with You know what? They'll have movie. more knickknacks. I can get more knickknacks. That's what you would grab. <laughs> just, Absolutely. Yeah. And, but I think he did grab one thing that was sex toy ish mm. he picks up one dvd and it's so ver very clearly the homemade porn that they hid inside of a different dvd case uh -huh. because he yeah. grabs one yeah but you just you accidentally made it less anachronistic i believe it was a vhs tape but yeah oh was it VHS? <laughs> even better I, it was. I love that you gotta fix the tracking yeah yeah <laughs> Yeah, and we get the setup of their relationship, which is basically he's a spaz, she's a product of the patriarchy. What a novel setup! We, <laughs> oh, it's so yeah. Fancy. That that noise will happen after every shtick. <laughs> it's it's just like shtick, we shtick, we. That's the movie that we yeah. could just say that for another ninety minutes. We'd be describing the movie perfectly. Yeah, yeah. are you? Uh, is this a setup where we can just ask for the your editor to just add slide whistles in after yeah. everything <laughs> we say? For the oh, rest absolutely, of this? <laughs> Morgan. Right now, boo, whoop, we'll do we'll do real ones sometimes ourselves, but you add them in wherever you feel like. Yeah. No Whenever we say something that's not funny, just put a slide whistle in, and that makes it funny. Slide whistles, <laughs> clown horns, whatever you gotta go, whatever you gotta yep, do. Yep, yep, yeah, a little morning show. Yeah, stuff, there you whatever go. You got. There you go. Yeah. All right. So yeah. So we're meeting Jack. The, the, this gonna be the husband. We're also meeting Julie. This is the name they'll take on later in the movie. But I'm not gonna confuse you with their uh, with their opening names. So we're meeting Jack and Julia. What we mostly have to understand here is Julia is some kind of bitch. What thinks she doesn't have to listen to her husband? Mm hmm. Ugh. Yeah, she yeah. has autonomy and it's bad. It's she's got a case of the autonomy's really bad. And yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. She's on the autonomy spectrum. Yeah, yeah exactly. No. It's <laughs> Yeah, and they're getting a divorce, and I'm like, that's great. Like, that's clearly a healthy choice for you. Yeah, two. right. You both need to get his, but no, of course not. They're going to stay together because of Jesus, because this whole fucking genre is cursed. <sighs> All right, so they carry her out of the fucking room into the next scene where they're going to learn. She's going to learn the plot of this dumbass movie, I guess, and be just as disappointed as the rest of us. Yeah, pretty much, which is just, again, Justin Trudeau don't. Happened to witness a murder <laughs> and he was renting his trucks to the cartel. So he's apparently an accomplice to this murder in some weird way. He's a drug dealer. He's part of a he's drug cartel. Like, like, he's part of he's a drug admitting okay, to okay, the okay, FBI. Okay. He's like, so I'm in a drug cartel. Yep. They're like, oh, well, we're not. 
<laughs> we're going to relocate you to jail now, just right. so you know. And his <laughs> wife gets super pissed at him, and, and they play it like, women be crazy, right? Yeah. Like, <laughs> this, this movie should be called Can I Get a Gaslighting? Yeah, right. How <laughs> dare this bitch not want to give up her entire life in a moment or whatever. Oh, my God. I, yeah, I'm with High Maintenance Wife for pretty much the rest of this movie. I think I agree that Dumbo should get murdered and she should just go back to wine and fabric vaginas. Hundo P. Hell yeah. yeah. Hundo P. Although she doesn't know the wines she's talking about, which bothered me. <laughs> As she's leaving, she's like, what's good to bring to witness protection program? A Pinot Noir or Riesling? And she's holding up neither of those wines. <laughs> you guys couldn't. Either get the bottle that would fit that, or, or read the bottle that you write have. the other word into your dumb script. <laughs> write Shiraz. You can't write the word Shiraz. I see the word Shiraz, and the shapes of the bottles don't fit Pinot Noir and Riesling. Those are distinct. Jesus Christ! Your alcohol dar is really well calibrated. I just want to give you credit for that. <laughs> like you're really, you're on point. My whole thought was just like, man, she's really trying to find what wine to pair with this terrible fucking movie, and I sympathize because I'm like trying to figure out which booze <laughs> I need to drink next in yeah, order to get right, through the next right. hour. Well, and it's obviously Pinot Noir, so it's, um, <laughs> you know, it's fair. It's fair. Yeah, <laughs> she doesn't have as much experience with you pairing wine with terrible. Gonna bring movies. a Riesling to witness protection like a rube. <laughs> what? <laughs> idiot all right so and then we have this gag about like where are we going is it going to be somewhere awesome and they're like no it's going to be fresno <laughs> yeah fuck fresno i guess am i right san diego right right fresno and they convey that this place is terrible via like as soon as they get out of the car there's like three there's like gunshots within like three seconds which i want to highlight does not distinguish this from anywhere else in america at this point. not really no. no you guys heard a few into my mic from cincinnati moments <laughs> yeah ago. right <laughs> <laughs> yeah and okay so the the fbi has put them in witness relocation and apparently they've assigned them new identities new names a new home and a religion Right. Because they're just like, all right, you're yeah. going to be the associate pastor at this Christian church. And he's like, I'm not a Christian. And he's like, Dun doesn't matter. It's not a real job. So you mm, don't yep. have to be good at anything. <laughs> yep. Bar's real low. It's fine. Don't worry about it. Um, and we're also introduced to the, the real hero of this movie, which is the sign out in front of the church. Oh, oh my God. Thank you. It's the only punchlines yes. available to us. And for real, like at the beginning, here we get right. We don't raise our hands in church. We're afraid God might call on us. And like, I, I appreciate, I genuinely appreciate Christians who admit they have not done the reading because yeah. they haven't. But it's okay if you come to class and say, look, I haven't, I, I did, I just, I was busy this week or something. Listen. We're going to elect Liz Warren to scold all you idiots, but that's fine. Just admit it. Know your role. That's cool. Thank you. But but doesn't that say it all about this movie, though, that literally the funniest thing about this movie is a mildly clever church sign. It's an inanimate right? object. Yep. You're that right. is the yeah. high point. Yeah, exactly. They, it's got the best Those delivery. Are the protagonists. Too. Yep. Yeah. It's Absolutely. They're the best. And it's clearly Robert G. Lee trying to find a way to, like, fit all his amazing one liners that he couldn't jam into the script. But there were they, they were the best part because yep. they didn't get jammed into the script. Yeah, yeah. And, and weren't delivered by destitute man's Paul Rudd or destitute man's Paul Giamatti. <laughs> so we're going to meet the oblate spheroid that plays the pastor in this film uh, here, right? Yep. This is Jack's new boss. Jack is going to be the associate pastor. The FBI is going to give them a gigantic stack or two of cash for their witness <laughs> protection, right? Like they do, <laughs> like the FBI does. Yeah. Yep. And they admit right here. They're like, we only exist as a church because of government handouts like this stack of cash I'm getting right now. <laughs> Weirdly <laughs> self-aware moment. Yeah. Yeah. More yeah. honesty than I'm used to out of movie pastors. Yeah. Uh, this does not strike me as a functional business model. I mean, I'm, I'm not an expert <laughs> as like a philosopher. I don't really know, understand money things, but like, I'm pretty sure it's not the way that this happens in this particular movie. Well, when you don't have to pay taxes, you know, it's just, it doesn't. Yeah. Wow. Here's what you want to do. You, you want to be a clerical philosophy professor <laughs> and start a church. 100% better oh, for your economy, personally. Tell me about it. I absolutely know what you're talking about. <laughs> but like, yeah, it seems like the FBI folks in this are really not clear on how money works either because they're like, you have to like get off the grid. You can't use credit cards as opposed to. Maybe just give them credit cards under their new names or something. Yeah, that would work also. And then you <laughs> wouldn't have to have a giant, giant stack of money. Of <laughs> yeah, exactly. 
Also, okay, I'm sorry, but we have to point this out early and often. The only African American character in this movie growls. He growls. He yeah. Oh, well, he's one of two. Oh, you're right. No, you're two. right. You're right. Yes. Uh -huh. The other guy's literally a narcoleptic. Yes. Uh -huh. That's fun. True. And this other guy is giant and he calls him Lord Voldemort. And he's black. Yeah, he's a giant black that? guy who who will physically threaten several small white people over the course of this movie. That is his whole shtick. Yep. Yeah. I. Uh, Y'all are the experts here. Why? Why? Well, I mean, he's one of those enormous African-American men that looks like Rafe Fiennes a little bit. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. No, yeah, exactly. I, I was trying to follow you there. I, I got nothing. Um, and, and <laughs> there's a lot of miscommunication here. So, like, at one point, High Maintenance Wife makes a joke about how this place is, like, hideous and, like, whoever designed it should be arrested for a crime. And they do a shtick where it's like, we don't get the joke, but it's not mm. like that's a lame burn on like a volunteer organization. Why don't you act, <laughs> you know, more mature? Your life's being saved. It's like, literally, we do not understand the words you're saying. What do the words mean? Clean <laughs> crimes. I, what is crimes for like right. 10 seconds? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No. And again, it's like every joke here. It's like ramping up for the joke part. And then they're like, no, we're kidding. We're not going to. We're not going to go all the way to the joke. Boop. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So the, the they go to sleep on their shitty bunk beds and they shit in their shitty toilets and everything. And the next morning, Jack shows up with coffee. But bringing his wife coffee won't resolve this movie's central conflict. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> nope. It's going to take some books. Um, and, and we should highlight that like almost every new chapter, we'll call them chapters of this movie, is going to begin with a, a title card from our friend The Sign. And some yes, of them I uh, think are, are really <laughs> worth highlighting. Like Presbyterians were like Methodists but without the excitement. Like that's a sick <laughs> burn. And <laughs> if, if they had brought that oh, to the rest of this shit, movie. <laughs> Methodists without the excitement. <laughs> Woo. Super hot fire. <laughs> And then we're introduced, right, to Linda, the secretary, right? Well, so uh, yeah, so he leaves his wife to go off to the fucking ancillary character parade, beginning <laughs> with Linda, the secretary, yes. Oh, you mean with Janine ripped directly from Ghostbusters. Right, and, and the okay. 100%. Protagonist dumbass, like when she he, when he hears the voice, his response is, "Is that your real voice?" That was the only joke they could come up with. <laughs> that was funny for someone who's doing a dead-on Ghostbusters impression. Like nothing. Like <laughs> uh, who are you afraid of? Uh, is anything uh, anybody call Janine? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so we meet we meet Linda, then we meet Danny, the youth director, and he, by the way, is the annoying marriage counselor guy from the beginning. So fuck us. He's going to be in the rest of this movie, too. Right. And it turns out he's youth pastor and aspiring pedophile. Yeah. He's basically groundskeeper Willie, but somehow more depressing. <laughs> and he can't maintain <laughs> the terrifying. accent. Yeah. <laughs> he's, he's super scary. He's going to get his very own terrifying sexual predator shot for no other reason than that. It's just yeah. him leering right behind the Janine character for like five seconds. Nothing happens. Nothing is said. That's it. We just see him and it's terrifying. Yep. 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 Just short of like lifting up her skirt with a stick pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> <sighs> we also meet Kathy, the musical director. She's an actress that wears period costumes about town like actresses do. Yeah. She did some little home on the prairie <laughs> cosplay. Uh, yeah, which I, yeah. I, you know, I'm, I dig, I dig it. I'm into that kind of game. I, I'm happy for some <laughs> uh, marm action. <laughs> and, and like, if this were a good movie, right? She'd inevitably sleep with our terrible protagonist, but because it's a terrible Christian movie, she's just going to sleep with her lame atheist husband. Oh, just we're good doing a little Oregon Trail role play. What do you got, dysentery? <laughs> you got dysentery, don't you? Oh God, I'm dirty, bad girl. dysentery. <laughs> Dirty, yeah, yeah, right. And we should point out that like basically each of these characters walks on screen and says, hello, my name is Linda. My wacky quirks will be X, Y and Z. Right. So we've already done Linda, Danny and Kathy. Now it's time to meet Kathy's husband, Andy, the atheist mailman. He comes in and says, I'm the atheist mailman. Christianity's a fairy tale. Bye. <laughs> takes in point zero three seconds. I, I've seen closing credits that introduce the character slower than this. Mm hmm. Yep. Yep. They're just going through them like, OK, I've met you. 
Sure would be nice if another wacky character would hit their cue, hit their <laughs> cue, and walk in. There's the safari atheist mailman. Why, by the way, do you have a safari hat? This atheist uh, is stupid. The, is Fresno rainforest esque or safari? I think it's a bulletproof um, rainforest hat. I think it's to deflect the the bullets because it's Fresno or something. Right, right. Because uh, all the gunshots from earlier. That makes sense. Yeah, and I've got down okay. that he's played by Good Dimension Ted Cruz. Okay. <laughs> yeah, and it really is just like side plot speed dating. He just like shows up, and, and again, you're right. It's accurate, right? I every time I make eye contact with someone, I like to shout at them, "Hi, I'm an atheist," just to get it yeah. out there, right? You know, right? No, exactly. I stand sometimes to just stand on subway trains, yelling "atheist" over and over again in case anyone's unaware. Yeah. He also says, "Don't fuck my wife. I'm an atheist." How are those connected? Because that was his final thing. He was like. Great, there's your mail. Don't fuck my wife. I'm an atheist. As if did he say? Don't fuck my wife. He said, "Don't get any ideas." But basically, don't fuck my wife is what okay. I was, I was Which, picking up from that. In my experience of atheists, is the exact opposite of what atheists are going to ask you to do most of the time. <laughs> right? like, that, that is, if there's one group, yeah, that is not the way that atheism works. Um, no. <laughs> All right, but sorry, the ancillary character parade hasn't ended just yet. We still have to meet the two bad guys, kind of. This is the evil couple that I guess owns the church. It's very confusing. Yeah, it has a large loan, some something. It um, gets even more confusing later, but for the movie. The movie gets super confused about what a building and its ownership and a mortgage and a bank <laughs> and the complicated relationships therein. They have no idea what they're doing. Right, right. Yeah. And these two are played by Evil Dimension Ruth Bader Ginsburg and Evil Dimension Andrew Torres as because they're both okay. lawyers. <laughs> yep. Two suits. It's pretty weird. And as soon as Evil Dimension Ruth Bader Ginsburg is out of the room, Evil Dimension Andrew Torres explains to our protagonist that he a total stranger at this particular point. Like he's literally just walked into the room and met this person. He lays out on him all of their marriage issues, all of his hopes and dreams. Like it's just yep. straight verbal diarrhea about everything that this person wants and loves. Right. But you got to admit, cause I mean, they are different sizes and that it like comedically different sizes. <laughs> Picture Andrew Torres and Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Mm -hmm. One is large and one is small. And that's fucking funny. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's, Boy, that was That's the whole goddamn joke, wasn't it? It's the same design that you would use for Muppets. They're they're basically <laughs> Muppets at this point. It's just bouncing <laughs> along. <laughs> One of them is a Skeksy. <laughs> and I was kind of curious what they were supposed to represent here, too, right? Like, because she's a short haired woman, so obviously she's a bad guy. But, like, are they mainstream Christianity? It, we'll, we'll get there. We'll get there. Yeah. All right, so the pastor has to go talk to the evil short-haired lady. So he's very depressed and asks Linda to give Jack and Julie a tour of the church. So that now we get the giving them a tour of the church scene. And really, honestly, even in their movie, they can't pretend that a church is an en enormous waste of space. <laughs> it, they try, sort yep. of, and they fail every time. Yeah, yep. they're like, yep. this is our gigantic kitchen. We don't do anything with it. This is our gigantic dining room. It's empty. This is our gold smelter. It got condemned. <laughs> I don't know. Fuck yeah. you. And they try to do a shtick about like why things are closed. Like the we have a soup kitchen, but we don't use it because they found a rat. Which again, same health code as Subway. I don't. It seems overly harsh that we would yeah. cause them to stop. <laughs> right. You know. But it's just like one wacky bullshit after another. Yeah. Oh, and are you guys ready for some good running gag shit? Oh, God. Got a good yes. running literally, gag here for literally you. Literally running gags. Bring You're it in. right. They are going to run. In. Yeah. All right. So the wife, we saw her earlier hanging up all of her very nice clothes. Well, it turns out that's the rack where they hang the giveaway clothes. And now everyone's stealing all of her designer clothes. Oh, women would hate that. Can you imagine? <laughs> Can you imagine? She would chase homeless people around for the entire rest of the film over that. Yeah. Oh, my God. Like, she's just able to get them back. And rather than, like, have a normal conversation, it's like finders keepers fight to the death over clothing because bitches be shopping, I guess, or something. Yeah. Yeah. And the good guys from the church steal clothing from homeless people <laughs> to resolve this scene. Yep. 
Yep, and this will set up later a, a punchline about how she has to wear a ball gown to church because, like, genuinely, like everything in this movie is at eleven. They're like they yep. watch Spinal Tap, and their takeaway from Spinal Tap was literally just put everything up to eleven. <laughs> that was the point. A ball gown at church? Can you imagine? <laughs> everything ends in can you imagine? Yeah, yeah. Slide was yeah, yep. exactly. Yeah, exactly, Huge exactly. Slide. So yeah. So let's let's move on to that scene. So it's it's Sunday service, first day where Jack has to be the associate pastor, which means he has to sit near the pastor. Sure hope he can do that. And she, yes, is overdressed for the services. Yeah, as as opposed to like giant silent black dude who's standing in the back and like fancy suit. And like they'd done a shtick earlier in the movie where like he's an expert at blending in and he's just like standing in the way creeping out so they can do a separate shtick about <laughs> white people gawking at giant black dude because that is apparently comedy gold yes i'm pretty sure the conceit of the joke is can you imagine you just walk into your church and there's a black guy <laughs> okay like, I, I don't get that's not just a conceit that's a montage that we get <laughs> yes yep. Yep. of people walking in and being like black guy can i say that out loud black <laughs> Am I pointing at him? Am I touching his face? He seems to be <laughs> black guy. There's a lot of prop comedy in this movie, and the black guy is one of the props, is what we're saying. Yes, yeah, exactly. Oh, and all right, so, and also, by the way, the atheist mailman apparently comes to church every Sunday, so he's doing it wrong. I mean, you know, usually I say to each his own, but man, you're fucking this all up. Yeah, I really was hoping that this <laughs> ended in a divorcing her and like taking everything, including her marm outfits. <laughs> um, oh and this is where we learn that his atheist club you guys know like atheist clubs like we have yeah. um his yeah. atheist club meets at that church on thursdays which is why they had to put big blankets over all their stained glass windows so as not to offend the atheists right yeah as if there are no libraries or brothels anywhere in this town yeah, right like, it's like come on <laughs> Man, this skeptics in a pub sucks, man. What kind of really yeah. like dystopia again? Build your world. And we'd be asking for blankets over their like brains and mouths, not their fucking stained glass windows. <laughs> yeah, those are. Yeah, those I are mean, the windows are kind of nice. Blankets over your voting ballots forever. I don't care about the windows. <laughs> <laughs> the windows are pretty. I like the windows. Yeah, they're beautiful. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so the one of the few things they do right is windows. Yeah. Yes, exactly. <laughs> All right, but now it's time for the, and honestly, okay, so Aaron, you've got to understand, we've been through this about three goddamn hundred times, where mm -hmm. in the movie, like, the non-Christian person is called upon to say grace or to say the prayer uh, or whatever, and they have yeah. no idea what to do, and... Can you imagine? Yeah. I, <laughs> slide whistle. Yeah, I'm just, I'm like, baffled by this. Like, he comes up like he's an alien who's just, like, learning to use a body and speak English <laughs> for the first <laughs> right. time. Like... <laughs> How how not interacting with human beings has your life been that you can't bullshit a prayer? You're not being asked to do it in Latin, dude. Like, just yeah, make right. some shit up. <laughs> that is the whole point of this movie. You can make some shit up, and that is a prayer. Yep. Oh, oh, also, also, hey, I got a gag for you guys. What if the musician's music machine couldn't music? Oh, God, the Casio keyboard sticks. Like, people at home, right, you hear the words Casio keyboard stick, Whatever you're imagining in your head <laughs> is funnier than what is going to happen yep. in this movie. Like, you have already surpassed it. Do right, because, like, I, how are we going to, like, bad music isn't funny to begin with, but what we go with is when she presses the keys, like, the sound that comes out is... <laughs> uh, a glass breaks and a slide whistle. Yeah. yeah it's how, so stupid. You couldn't get, like, a marimba or something going. Like, there's there's <laughs> so much more work that you could do with this. Ah. <laughs> uh. This podcast comes on somehow. Yeah. What the fuck? <laughs> All right. Well, and now it's time for the sermon. But, uh-oh, the pastor dies to carnival music. Yep. Right. It's like, that, 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 heart attack. Pastor dying shtick. That was a kind yeah. of a weird shtick to throw. And, like, it's met with eye rolling and, like, a fake yeah. from protagonist. But, like, the dude is straight dead. This is the this is game over for this particular character. But <laughs> yeah, <laughs> sad that slide. slide that's whistle. why the slide whistle goes in the other direction. People, it's it's really two <laughs> shticks. It's it how it ended. <laughs> that's comedy. 
Uh, All right. Well, I'll tell you what. Now that we have a nice humorous death to really get the ball rolling, I suppose we can take a quick break for a word from this week's sponsor, Quip. Hey, Noah, you, uh, what are you doing there? You polishing your shoes? No. Okay. Um, cleaning the gun? No, I'm just going to brush my teeth with this. I... Oh, wow. Uh, okay. How, how long have you had that toothbrush you got there? Uh, uh, when did the last season of Seinfeld come out? Uh, you know, they've made a lot of advancements in toothbrush technology since 1826. Psh, I'm sure the oral health of the people in the 19th century was fine. Uh, no, super duper was not. You should really try Quip. What's Quip? It's a toothbrush that was designed by dentists to focus on what actually matters to your dental health. Healthier brushing habits. How so? Well, Quip's sensitive vibrations with a built-in timer guide gentle brushing for the dentist-recommended two minutes with 30-second pulses ensuring an even clean. Plus, Quip automatically delivers brush heads to you every three months for clean new bristles right on schedule. New uh, br brush heads, huh? Yeah. Plus, the sleek, intuitive design is simple to use and comes with a travel cap it doubles as a mirror mount. Wow. Yeah, no, I guess this toothbrush is not sleek. Not sleek. Nope. I wouldn't use the word sleek. And the best part is that these thoughtful features make brushing something you actually want to do twice every day. And good habits matter to live a healthier life. So help form fresh oral habits with Quip. All right. You've got me sold. So how do I get started? Quip starts at just $25 and you'll get your first refill free at getquip.com slash awful. Wow, what a simple way to support our show and start brushing better. Yep, but you have to go to getquip.com slash awful to get your first refill free. Wow, so we should all go right now to getquip.com slash awful. We sure should, getquip.com slash awful. All right, well, if you'll excuse me, I have to go sand down these bristles. Yeah, you, you sure should. That is an excellent idea. Do you use, like, an orbital? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we're back. When we last left off, the pastor was dying, so we're going to rejoin the action at his funeral with some nice topical ca cassette tape humor. Ugh, more <laughs> AV system sh stinks. Yeah, as a as a tech person, I just, like, I just can't. I'm so, that's horrible. This movie was made in 2016. Did they thaw these actors the fuck out? <laughs> yeah. The music director, this is a, a, a funeral service, and she's got a, a boombox from the 80s from, like, do the right thing yep. over her shoulder. <laughs> yep. And yep. she's got a cassette tape that, okay, so what the fuck kind of mixtape was this? It had... <laughs> It had Amazing Grace on it that you would, okay, that makes sense for a funeral. Mm -hmm. But she was like, uh, yeah, I'm just setting up a mixtape for the funeral. I'm going to use my mixtape that has Amazing Grace. It also has the Hallelujah Chorus. It'll be fine. I probably won't, I won't just keep going after that. I won't get to that <laughs> part. And then, and then she tra she's trying to fix it and it's like, ha, 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 staying alive. And everybody's like, boo, boo, not funny. Yeah, yeah so right. Like, yeah, that's the thing is, boy, I'll tell you what, if you didn't like that joke the first time, what if we did the exact same joke again the next time? Would you like it twice? Would you do it? We do the same. Highway to hell. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Just relax. I, this movie basically needs comic book captions like old Batman style, like zoinks, yeah. <laughs> like flying out of the screen at you during this. <laughs> <sighs> All right, so yeah, so we get the little music gag, and then Jack has to say the pastor funeral words, and he's not very good at that. Oh, I know. We're oh. like half an hour in, and we get to this topsy turvy turn where now he's the pastor, which means we have an hour of him awkward mumbling, like mumble coring his way through this fucking sermon. Yeah, yeah, exactly. He can't even <laughs> remember which religion it is that gets all the virgins. <laughs> yep. Get it? Yep. And then the music director hits the button one more time, and Havan Nagila comes on, and they had, had to cut a bunch of slur words from the audience <laughs> of the church people. Well, you know, uh, when they say comedy comes in threes, what they mean is the exact same joke three times is three times as funny. I want it to be like, the pastor isn't the only one dying on this stage. A guy. <laughs> <laughs>
All right, so Jack calls the FBI agent in charge of his case to complain, but darn it if that guy's not in the middle of a gunfight just then. Now, uh, that doesn't factor into the scene. That's a joke all by itself, right? Like, imagine if he got a call and he'd be in a gunfight because he's with the FBI. Yeah, this guy has two jobs, Done. taking dweebs and putting them in churches and then murdering people. These are the two yeah. things the FBI <laughs> apparently does. Yeah, uh-huh. Oh, and then, of course, we've got to get the gag where him and his wife are trying to open that safe with the giant stacks of money in it. But damn it, if the only guy who knew the combination wasn't dead. This movie has about <laughs> like half a carrot tops worth of prop comedy is really like when you're looking at the ingredients for this movie. <laughs> and it's it's the safe is just like a very small aluminum foil box. Just, right. Oh, just cut it open. <laughs> yeah. What are you doing? But they're like, try eight, five. Did you say eight, five? You think the combination <laughs> to this safe is the number eight, the number five? You want me to put that in? They keep using single digit numbers as their guesses. I mean, it's not. It goes up to 100. It's not a fucking yeah. pin, I said guys. eight, five. I think I have a feeling <laughs> it's eight, five. I mean, look, Heath, we're going to have to come back to this well four or five more times. So, like, we can't <laughs> we can't blow our whole safe wad here on the first. Yeah, ship. we've got right, right. to yeah. save something. No, the, to go. the character arc, they'll figure out what if we try three numbers? It gets exciting. Yeah, oh, no, oh, yeah, oh, we'll, we'll get there. We'll yeah. get there. So, yeah, so they can't open it now, damn it. So he goes to his office, Jack does, and Linda and Kathy are sadly putting up their stuff because they assume that they're going to get fired by the new associate pastor because they're women and have no no value. Yeah, that's that's fair. But they under underestimated, right, how, how pointless everything that happens in this movie is. The idea that anything will change a value over the course of this movie is just really misguided. Yeah. So, yeah, so he says they're not going to fire him. Then atheist mailman shows up to fuck up the problem of evil. Yeah. Like, yep. <laughs> I love this so much when they try to do an atheist argument, because obviously they don't know the atheist arguments or they wouldn't be religious anymore. So this is here's how they have him present the argument. He says, like, if you believe in free will, then why would I be punished for making the wrong choice? Do you guys think yeah. that's the objection that we have? Yeah, that's. That's not how that works. Consequences right. were, is what we're at. What we're <laughs> but the movie thinks they lost that argument, which isn't the argument. Because the movie's like, eh, it's a really good point. All the Christian people are like, fuck, he's got he's stumped. Are you in the movie? He said a lot of words with a question mark at the end. Yeah. <laughs> is this guy in the movie? I feel like he's just showing up and he's fucking messing with us and he's winning every time. He did pay us 500 bucks. But. Yeah. Well, they got to show growth somehow, right? So it's like Rocky before he punches the atheists and then Rocky after he punches the atheists, I think is how that <laughs> got gotcha, yeah. Oh, dude, <laughs> this is 100% some guy, an atheist, who spent the $500 to be in the movie. That makes so much sense. Oh, my God. And he, <laughs> right. And they just, yeah, he was just, and, and, and he's just like, yeah, I'm going to say what I'm going to fucking say, guys, while I'm in on, in front of this camera. Hell is dumb. Oh, Yeah. He's he's not wrong about that. You're right. Hell is yeah. pretty fucking stupid. Um, <laughs> C.S. Lewis. No? Nothing? Yeah. No? Okay. Here's your mail. God is dead. <laughs> Fuck, is he? Are you serious? <laughs> I love you. He's getting us. So, like, they have this argument or whatever, and then Kathy says, hey, Jack, let's go for a walk. We have no fucking idea how to end this scene otherwise so walk with me to the next scene we should walk from here <laughs> elsewhere to the Great. exterior yeah <laughs> so they go outside the atheist character i love this he's like you know i'd respect and like christianity a lot more if you guys were more in my face about it uh yeah, he like he wants to just be pushed around. I mean, like I think he's explaining why his sex life with little Bo Peep is not working out properly. That like he I really gotcha. wants her to ride him properly, <laughs> um, and that's what he looking he's for. Not doing it right is why that's not working. Out. Yeah, right, no. right. And she's like explaining how the pastor had never left the church. Like he saw it as a fortress or something to protect people. Like she's shitting on the dead guy and Fresno yep. in the same <laughs> moment as she's trying to get this guy to like convert and be part of this system. I don't I'm getting mixed yeah. signals is what I'm saying from Christian yeah, lady. Right. But then he beats the movie again. He's like, hey mm -hmm. guys, um just quick thing. Maybe focus on real things that help people. And they're like, oh 
Yeah. And she's like, totally. L- listen, honey, you're making a little bit too many good arguments too quickly. We need you to fuck off so that I can convert this empty haircut over here. Yeah. And he's like, no, this is an atheist movie. And they're like, can we cut that? Do we want to cut? <laughs> he paid no, $500. Do we have to leave that in? I'm, I'm confused <laughs> about do. how our Kickstarter works. Here's my contract. <laughs> fuck, we do have to keep it. It says it. We wrote this. Also, okay, so here's how bad this fucking movie is, right? So the atheist guy leaves. Jack and Kathy are walking down the street, and she's going like, yeah, the people who live in this go- in this neighborhood are good people. They work really hard and aren't on government assistance. And as she's saying that, we're seeing the movie's other black guy. Oh, God. <laughs> yep, the people who live in this neighborhood are minorities and old people. Yep. They need help. And also Dust Bowl farmers, if that's what he appears to be doing. <laughs> He's just raking some dust is my second job. Okay. Yeah, I'm, what? I'm, I'm pretty sure this is the kid from o, o Brother Where Art Thou, the one who sells his soul to the devil, because all his all entire <laughs> shit is that he has a guitar and he's a narcoleptic. I'm, I'm just okay. that, that guy grown up. Like that's yeah. my, my oh, brain canon. Sense. I don't you, you pick your own <laughs> canon at home. Um, Interesting backstory there. Right. I, I, I have a thing oh. where I try to make terrible movies better in my head. So I Yeah, that's the only that way plot. we get through. I get it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And like several pointless sticks later, they've kidnapped this black old this old black guy, and like they're keeping him from receiving proper end of life care by keeping him in the church. Yeah. Okay. So they establish that this character has Alzheimer's and narcolepsy, which will both be used as gags for the rest of the fucking movie. Right? Gags and the legal reason to you weren't exaggerating, kidnap this man. Yep. Yeah. But on the plus side, right, two black characters. That's that's a big thing. Yeah. I'm just saying that's that's a hundred percent increase of black characters in this movie. It's silver yeah. lining. Highest people. employment rate among black people. The president told me that. It's true. Now, I want to point out that for the rest of the movie, they'll have him just sleeping in the pews without a blanket. Right? Mm-hmm. Like, look at how much nice shit we did for this guy. Did you realize that you can lie people down in a pew and then they'll stand up and say a line and that's funny? Because yep. we're going we're gonna to do that a few times. It's a really good, like, I, I'm hoping I'm sharing some insights here with y'all here, people. Oh, you still didn't realize? No, just it's rule of eights. Just give it a second. It's <laughs> yeah, exactly. Rule of eights. All right. So now, of course, we have to establish a friendship between Linda and Julie. They're going to have them some girl talk, starting off with, so what's up with Kathy, the religious person, and Andy, the atheist husband? That's pretty wacky, huh? Yeah. You just want to do a spin-off. Uh, we get some, like, random a- exposition alternating with objectification lessons? Is that what I'm taking away? Like, yes, exactly. Exactly. Because, <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah, once we get through that, Julie's going to give Linda a make Danny want to fuck you makeover. Yeah, it's like, Siri, show me the opposite of passing the Bechtel test. <laughs> it's just a woman like there's literally a line in here where a woman just tells another woman to smile more and you're just like christianity that's yep. the punchline i don't have to write yeah. it yeah they didn't write a punchline christianity Whoop. <laughs> and then that fell backwards <laughs> led sub and then we get like a montage of Julie trying to sexy Linda up, them trying to break in this safe, Danny fixing shit, and Eddie, the old the old black guy, falling asleep in random places because narcolepsy is <laughs> super funny. And also assaulting another elderly person. I want to notice that they they big jo- they got they got time in there to to randomly assault a woman who's trying to walk. Oh right, right, oh, right. yeah. Yes, uh-huh. they did. I, they just they just made a montage of all the unrelated things that are happening yes, in this scene. Yes. So clearly they were just like, fuck, did we not write any dialogue for a bunch of these scenes? It's a lot that we didn't write. <laughs> so montage for this whole thing? Great. Yeah. So what's, what's the difference between a montage and just security camera footage? Nothing? Okay, nothing. Great. <laughs> yeah, <I'm> just... <laughs> right, right. <laughs> the angle? It's the angle, right? Yeah. There's color. Yeah. They, they, they did this in color. That's the difference. Okay. <laughs> If this was filmed like Clerks, it would have been better. <laughs> yeah, that's true. All right, so that. the montage ends, and now Linda is sexy, and by that I mean not wearing glasses. Yep. Right, like that's the only difference. I found her super attractive before and after. I was a big Janine <laughs> fan. Yeah, you like him frumpy? That's fair. Yeah. I, I like, yeah. 
I like Trumpies. Janine. I don't know nice. the Gestalt. You like the you like the boxy doing. clothing and the like yeah, sclo- yeah. scleriosis and uh, stop what? it <laughs> okay. stop it right now <laughs> it's so hot in here and creepy Michael Keaton shows up and like yep. sees pretty woman secretary and does like full on horny wolf shtick like eyes oh tongue. he fucks the fucking <laughs> door jam dick yeah. just <laughs> flapping out there just like banging it against the wall as clear as he can do yeah yeah. And so we get that and then we get Jack walking into his office and he sits back and he puts his feet up on the desk as though he's just realized that pastor is a job with no responsibilities. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Accurate, accurate. And like he's trying to look super relaxed and he like sits down in this low budget office furniture that they've rented for this particular thing. But it doesn't even lean back. So like everything else in this movie, it's just painfully awkward (laughs) as he like tries to look relaxed. (laughs) Yeah, but now he realizes that he has to write sermons and shit. So, oh, no, he'll have to read all the pastor's books. And I love this gag so much because they're supposed to pan up to his shelf and there's like a lot of books, but there aren't. No. Right. <laughs> no. There's like like two months worth of reading there. Several of them are clearly encyclopedias. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Including the encyclopedias. <laughs> there's like space left over on his single bookshelf for signed baseballs and shit. Does that say bookshelves for dummies? You have a bookshelves for dummies book to no. fill space on a shelf? <laughs> Is that a coffee table book about coffee tables? <laughs> oh, yeah. All right, so now, okay, so we cut to the next morning. This is the morning of his big sermon now that he's fallen asleep to his dictionary. And wouldn't you know it, Danny, the funny guy character, has gotten the church's PA working. Apparently, they have a giant fucking set of bullhorns that (laughs) blares out over all of Fresno. The city of Fresno. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And it's a little bit of like good morning Vietnam here, but without the charisma to pull off actually doing the whole shtick. So they just cut it off halfway like every shtick. Robin Williams has more charisma right now. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, and I'll be honest. This like him shouting into a bullhorn is honestly no weirder than the fucking Catholic church that is across the street from my house. And I have to hear their stupid bells every hour of every Sunday. How does that motivate people to want more Jesus? I do not understand this causality. Explain this to me. I hear those bells and I'm like, fuck Jesus. Fuck that guy. Why did he tell his followers they needed bells? All right, so now he has to do his his first sermon, and boy, is he nervous. So then music lady, Kathy, she tries that cassette gag again. Ah, that always kills. That just never stops being funny. She played the wrong song on her cassette player Mm. at church. And, and like they just they keep having her stack pieces of broken <laughs> technology on top of each other. Like the next one I want, like like she puts like a hand cranked music like minstrel show thing on top what? of it and starts winding <laughs> it and just like like horrible demon noises come out. Like how how far back into the into the recesses of terrible technology can you run this gag? Just a dead cherub with a harp on top of that. <laughs> also, okay. So here's how badly done this fucking movie is. So the big gag that they have here, right? Jack goes up to do his sermon and he's got real sweaty armpits. But the movie's so poorly lit and his shirt isn't like light colored. You can only tell at first that he's got the armpit stains because the other characters are signaling to him about the armpit stains. For like 20 fucking seconds. I think you need to emphasize how long this terrible, like how many of the sad sack characters get involved in this pit stain shtick. This is a black hole of fucking funny. Like everyone, everything (laughs) dies in this moment. And then, and then he actually, he actually does the sermon for a second and he's bad at pretending to be bad at speaking mm-hmm. the actor is like yeah the actor memorized the lines and now he's fake reading them to sound like he's reading them just don't memorize them just read them <laughs> yeah. i know yeah. you're not a strong reader i've watched you act <laughs> And I would honestly take monotone book report version over the like random awkward gyrating that will follow after he loses access to his note cards. Yeah. All right. So Jack goes back and screams it into his pillow and has a big sad harumph. And then his wife comes in to talk about how relatable and humorous that last scene was. 
Yeah, the the characters <laughs> appear to bond over how terrible this movie is, which I think is unfair because that's our job. Like, we yeah, right. Bond over how yeah. Terrible the movie is. <laughs> you guys were yeah. inches away from fucking earlier. That's definitely our job. Exactly, but no, <laughs> they get to have sexy time, which we're not going to get to watch because Jesus. Yeah, right. And she's like, "Wow, you're really bad at pastoring. You want to fuck me now?" And he's like, "Yeah, are we over the?" problem the marital problems that we never defined yep <laughs> the, the problems yep. of your autonomy yes we appear to have solved the problems of her autonomy as she has been folded into the plot devices of this movie <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> yeah and smash cut again to the sign making a joke begging people to believe in god because sex which is a better argument for god than anything else you'll get in this movie yeah no that's true i love that too because we cut from him her saying hey you want to fuck to the next day so apparently they fucked all afternoon it was broad day it was like it, literally he went the the sermon and mm-hmm. then he called the guy and then he went and fucked his wife so kudos to them you know well i mean yeah they've got a lot of fucking to catch up on because she's been you know requiring that he let her be on top or something i would imagine so oh it, yeah it, it fixed the problem <laughs> And okay, so he goes back to his office and he catches Linda and Kathy giggling about how bad he is at pastoring. And not at the, the fact that they were fucking really loud all day in the church. That was my initial impression of that jump cut was like <laughs> they're giggling because they heard how loud that fucking got. Like, yeah, it's like, wow, you guys, I thought I heard you guys fucking, but it didn't last very long. I like it couldn't have been fucking that you were doing, right? The mm. bunk beds fell through the wall. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> I was trying to. Go from we're trying to do a top bottom thing. It was it's harder than you don't. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So now he he tells his um secretary and everything. He's, he's like, I got to read all the books this week in that entire thing. And then he falls asleep to books again. And then we have this amazing fucking scene. I love this so goddamn much. Kathy comes in while he's asleep in front of his books and she's laying a choice selection of books out in front of him. <laughs> the very best that Christian authorship has to offer. I shit you not. It's in order, Lee Strobel, <laughs> C.S. Lewis, Strobel. and Josh McDowell. Mm. Those are the three books he gives him. I want you to start with The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. <laughs> that is your first Christian apologetic. I wanted to say... I no, f- it's mere Christianity. I, I feel bad for C.S. Lewis in this con- situation, right? Like, Do you? I do. I feel like C.S. Lewis is a decent writer. And like, I'll okay, be, at least I'll, that, yeah. I'll, okay, I'll be honest. I'll that. You know, in my first marriage, which was to a Christian who ended up going to seminary school, how'd that go? You called it first marriage. I, I think <laughs> I think I clarified everything you need to understand okay. about the situation. Right. <laughs> One of the things she had me read was C.S. Lewis's *Mere Christianity*. And it was readable. <laughs> I'm saying it was readable is what I'm saying, oh, okay. right? Okay, like the arguments are bad. Uh huh. But. It's short, and I got through it. <laughs> yeah, no, it was it's short. It was short. It was really fucking short. I was, that's what I was thinking. Is like, you know, he's been complaining about having to read all of these books this week. I'm like, well, if I knew you were dealing with C.S. Lewis and Lee Strobel, well, yeah, you could do that in an afternoon. I know, right? I looked up oh Lee God. Strobel and McDowell, and I'm like, oh, evangelicals, bored. Let's go back to C.S. Lewis's weird mythology and, and yeah, like. <laughs> absurd horrible like mere christianity is basically bad moral realism and i say that as a moral realist like it's it's the the thing that gives moral realism a bad name and then in between <laughs> that it's a lot of weird thoughts about what liars would do like yeah we'll, yeah. we'll get to that later though that'll come up as an important yep, plot it's point sure this fuck will and also i just i love this so goddamn much because this is how little they understand about anything that's happening in the universe at this point, we see him. He's fallen asleep reading again. But this time, apparently, he's so into it that he fell asleep reading two books. Mm-hmm. He's got two books open on top of him as he sleeps. That's how into it he was. He was reading one book with the left eye and the other one with the right eye. God damn it. One was Braille. He was doing it eyes and Braille. Oh, gotcha. <laughs> and, like, maybe she should mix in, like, two Christian apologetics and one book on public speaking. Like... Yeah, you, don't, that would help. you don't solve crippling public speaking problems by reading a bunch of theological texts. That's that's not how any of this works. So, <laughs> I mean, it's at least as coherent as anything else that happens in hijinks, church, Fresno. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love this next scene, too, where he like he runs out of his office to shit on the Jewy parts of the Bible. He's like, yep. Yep. He, he runs out. And he's like, hey, do you understand this Old Testament? It's fucking weird, right? 
Yeah, it's full and on Seinfeld says, yeah. shtick. What yeah. is up with these Canaanites? <laughs> what? <laughs> I mean, it's basically what's a cubit, but we're not allowed to do what's a cubit anymore because someone ruined no, that we are not. forever. <laughs> Fucker. They're black. They're Arab. They're black. They're Arab. Pick a race and go with it. <laughs> and it's absolutely the wrong sell because it's like the Old Testament makes new sense, but the New Testament is rad. And I'm like, come on, man. Yeah. The Old Testament <laughs> is where all the fun shit is at. Let's be honest with ourselves. Like, no one is excited by like lovey McCross pants. We want to read about the murders. Go to the right, murders. But so yes. here's the thing, though. The New Testament also has that crazy shit. Anybody remember the 30 to 50 feral hogs in the Bible. Like, that's the <laughs> fucked up thing is that like what this is the kind of thing that someone has when they or says when they have the new and old testaments described to them, not when yep. they fucking read them. When you actually read it, you're like, wow, this is really fucked up. Everyone dies in this old, in this uh, New Testament. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Isn't that that's when Jesus like exercises the person and then sends the pigs into the fucking ocean just yes. to be a dick? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Fuck those. He's pigs. like, I've exercised you. You know what? I'm going to murder these pigs now. Fuck too. these Great. feral hogs. Which like yeah. is a waste like from an animal animal use perspective. Like that's a that's good meat. Like the demons yep. don't actually harm the, the flavor. In fact, they actually probably add to the flavor of meat. Yeah, let's it, be honest. It, it, I would like some I demon imagine. bacon. I would eat yeah. demon bacon. Yeah. yeah, you're starting Christianity. You're doing bacon now. Just fucking use it. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> and I like that his takeaways from reading C.S. Lewis are like. Did you know that he fed a bunch of people? Like, I love dunks on C.S. Lewis, but this feels unnecessarily cruel <laughs> about like how how dumbed down this version of Christianity yeah. really is. <laughs> Uh, oh, so he goes back into uh, into study more Jesus shit, and this then of course Danny shows up to ask Linda out, but she says no because he didn't notice her until she had her sexy not wearing glasses at the moment makeover. Yeah, again, like the atheist character, making way too much sense for the movie she's in. Like she really needs to not not put things together as quickly. <laughs> <laughs> and like in in return, we get uh, like a bunch more gaslighting from her about for not wanting to be a sex object or something like I just have I, my notes are just like Christianity question mark. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. So now he, okay. So we have the scene where he's like laying in bed reading and his wife comes up and wants to help him be a good pastor now. And he starts telling her about all the great shit that he's read in all these apologetics books. And he says, did you know that CS Lewis says that you can tell Christianity is real because it's, absolute and utter crazy bullshit it's so stupid oh, it circles back to reason. yes Think and that's it. actually c.s lewis's argument if it was fake it would make fucking sense oh yeah it's the horseshoe theory of religion <laughs> yeah it's absolutely 100 percent horseshoe theory and like i got here and i'm like oh good finally some philosophy that i can sink my teeth into and i'm like no <laughs> nope i tap Is that what out you felt Tap. for a second no y'all okay. have no idea uh the fucked up shit i'm I mean, like let's be honest here i have made up a lot of crazy shit in my life and the fact that i have made it up and that it is crazy shit does not make it true that argument <laughs> does not follow otherwise i would have yeah. a lot of apologizing to do in my life yeah. <laughs> i'm gonna go die for a lie does this make sense i don't know what's happening <laughs> He goes, he says to the wife, he's like, yeah, the proof of Christianity is pretty overwhelming. We won't we won't mention any of it. We'll just you and I will just nod. Yeah, that right? was That's... the sentence after so stupid. It has to be real. Yeah, the proof is overwhelming. Literally. You, did you hear yourself? I'm going to play you <laughs> back to yourself. Just listen to your sentences. The proof that it's batshit crazy is absolutely overwhelming. That is for sure. Yep. This is exactly like trickle down <laughs> economics. Yeah, no, right. right? If, if we've established that batshit crazy equals true, then yes, the proof is overwhelming. <laughs> yeah, I am on board sure. with your agreement that this is so batshit crazy that only crazy people would believe in it. So and then <laughs> and then he's like, you know, I feel a little hypocritical about this sermon that I'm about to give. Because I don't actually believe in any of this Christianity shit. To which his wife's like, well, then, you know, why don't we just give our lives over to Jesus? It's pretty much the end of the second act, isn't it? Did it. Yeah, we get yeah. some Christian now. <laughs> some piano music. We get, we get some piano. Like, becoming Christian just apparently involves listening to a little bit of piano music and closing your eyes for a second. Yeah. yeah. No, he... He just gives himself a hands-free orgasm somehow, and he's like, Jesus, nailed it. I'm no longer a hypocrite. We're in. 
I love how you say somehow you can tell this guy's never been married. Yes, he gave himself a no hands orgasm. Mm -hmm. Wait. <laughs> Yeah, Wait, no, you learn circling you, back. You learn to do it just by shaking back and forth at a certain point. Yeah. Oh, you do like the helicopter dance? Yeah, uh -huh. yeah, exactly, exactly. You know, you got to you got to get it in when you can. Um, it like Christ edging, like crucifying yourself. <laughs> like, we'll, we'll, we'll workshop that. We'll work on it. Yeah, we'll figure, we'll figure something out. It's fine. The video game has a feature for that, I'm sure. <laughs> And I also love this fucking like, because she's like, what did you just do? He's like, I Jesus in my head. She's like, really? He says, I became a Christian because I suddenly realized it wasn't all about me. I Jesus so hard. The, the philosophy mm. that says the universe was literally created for me and that God came down incarnate in this goddamn universe and died because I jacked off once later isn't all about me. <laughs> mm. Yeah. And then the wife is like, oh, man, you're. You just, that was so fast. You're Christian now? Boom. All right. I want to be a Christian. And he's like, no. <laughs> no and, and she has You're trouble finishing at being a Christian. This is a really extended metaphor about sex. Yeah. Let's like, unpack this a bit further, right? <laughs> Makes so much sense. Slutty what? city wife, like, does a whole, like, <sighs> go out of the room Did and. Did you hear cry. my mind blown? <laughs> She, wow! She just yes. can't quite get there. She just can't tying quite... this together. This is amazing. <laughs> accidental writing they did. This is what philosophy degrees get you. You really tie the whole thing together. <laughs> All the concepts. you can really find some amazing <laughs> accidental writing. Yeah. <laughs> but this is probably my favorite single moment because, like, he becomes a Christian, then she walks out of the room, and we're supposed to see her. I think become Christian. Yes, it's the best. You can <laughs> practically hear her saying. Act, 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 act under her breath, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> it's the greatest. She she walks out into the hallway because you you have to be in a hallway or you have to be by yourself. Like, well, don't so, look. It's like I stage fright for I know being. I can't go. Yeah, exactly, exactly. That and and then we get uh, what I thought was about to be a musical number, being like, I can't be Christian, <laughs> but. It's just her trying. So she goes out there and this is her bro this is her Broadway moment, her Oscar moment. She's like mm -hmm. laugh, cry, laugh, cry, laugh, cry, laugh, cry. Kristen, 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 Kristen. I didn't get it. Yep. Super Sam. I shat. I want to roll a D twenty for Christianity. <laughs> I know that y'all have a um Christianity bingo game and I feel like this is the first one that manages to clear the whole board like it just covers every single Christianity it's, it's not the first one but yes it certainly does yeah <laughs> it really it really and like yeah he, they were in a conversation they were having a relationship about this why did she wander off to do this long dark <laughs> crying in the hallway of the soul oh, to herself <laughs> All right, well, I'll tell you what. I feel like that actor is going to need a few more minutes to summon some tears. So we're going to take a break. But first, let me give Act 3 the hard sell. Will that actor summon some tears? Why doesn't she just think about the career that could have been? Does it help that I was crying at this point in the movie? Find out the answers to these questions and more when we return for the, oh, yeah, the plot conclusion of Can I Get a Witness? P protection. You know, over the years, we've seen a lot of portrayal of atheists in Christian movies, and they've all shared a lot of similar traits. Now, as much as we'd love to push back against those stereotypes, it turns out they're actually all 100% true. We've tried, but we can't mm -hmm. argue with a single one. In fact, just listen to this typical meeting between two real-life atheists. Hi, I am Heath. Hi, I am Aaron. Pleased to meet you. Pleased to meet you. There is no God. You are right. Christianity sure is a fairy tale. You are right about your follow-up. I would believe that, in fact, irrespective of the evidence laid before me. You're right. So right. So what did your mom die of? Cancer. Yours? A car accident. On her way to chemo. For the cancer. Right. Rough. Yeah. Would you like some wine? I don't know. How snooty is it? Oh, it's the snootiest of wines. Sure. I'll have a mug. Great. So. That God uh, sure does not exist, does he? Sure doesn't. Right. More mug wine? Let's ask our dominant wives what they think. 
that's a great idea because, of course, we value the opinion of women, and that is a negative stereotype in Christian movies. You are right. We are both right about everything we've said, I would say. So right. Including that. <laughs> Atheism. Thank you. So right. And we're back for more of this shit. When we last left our heroes, they were becoming Christian, and now we rejoin them waking up a uh, Christian. <laughs> <laughs> we also get to see our protagonist again, the sign yep. outside the church. Yep. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The hero. Um, maybe you guys can explain this one to me. It said, download God's prayer app for hours of quality faith time. Was that mm. FaceTime? Yeah, mm-hmm. like sort of mm-hmm. not rhyme, but lisp. sounding similar pun. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Okay. Get, get Jesus in home. your iPhone and he will totally pwn. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> There's no way Jesus wasn't an Android guy. That's ridiculous. Yeah, right. Right. <laughs> the son of God. Uh, yeah. And we get the good morning Vietnam shtick again, uh, but like not quite because I think that I think they're worried about being sued at this point by the estate. Right. Like that's why we're not getting <laughs> they cut it off just just short. I so wanted when they woke up for them to be like, Look, I, I I know we had a lot to drink. Less, I feel like I converted religions. Can we just not talk about that? Can we just pretend? Yeah. Also, by the way, to circle back to those bunk beds, if you've noticed, now they have debunked the beds. Yep. Just like Lee Strobel debunked. <laughs> oh, I see what you did book. there. Also, also, she slept in her robe. And that's just fucking weird. <laughs> yeah, yeah, fair enough. Super yeah, weird. that's your crazy person, or or in fairness, wasted. Well, that's like, true. Yeah, that happens. I would like to see the cutting room floor sequence where, like, in the middle of fucking, they were like, "Man, we really need these beds to be next to each other." That's not going to help at all because they're not connected, and it's like going to slide <laughs> apart if we're like trying to have sex on them. I'm but, getting like- injured in the gap. <laughs> you can see what's happening. Look at this. We're, we should pick one or the other bed and then just we could just go back to them. They're both children's size. We should just fuck standing up. I explained this to you. Small. You want to stand up? I hit my head. I hit my I'm bleeding. I'm bleeding a lot. Oh, and just so you know how quick we'll put, we're going to pull triggers on in this fucking movie. It's at this point that Jack gets a phone call from the FBI guy and he's like, hey, good news. I found you a new safe house. You don't have to be a Christian anymore. He's like, no, you know what? I want to I want to be a pastor anyway now. A Christian one. Oh, man, like, yeah. and, and you just knew the call was coming after the double, like, set up that, like, because modern Christianity is just 100% paint by numbers, apparently. Like, yep. there is n- <laughs> no beat in this story that is not telegraphed from space. It is fucking horrible. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, we don't want to go. We've converted via Jesus sex. We're done. Via Lee Strobel. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to stay and finish the movie. Thank you. Don't call me back. They literally fucked on a pile of mere Christianity. I really, I think that it's <laughs> a beautiful symbol. I think we should actually support this movie. I've switched sides. I'm putting $500 so that I can, yeah, so, that right. I can be, so that I can be the copy of mere Christianity under, under these two individuals. <laughs> All right. So now it's time for my best worst. It's time for the second makeover of the movie. This time they're going to fix the church and pretty it up a little by... Taking the goddamn blankets off the stained glass windows and nothing else. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Just- and they're so excited. They're just like, yay, look at all the Christian photons. <laughs> Why would you leave? Uh, it's just getting bludgeoned to death by metaphors. <laughs> <laughs> the atheist guy comes in and he's like, fucking windows. Now everybody's going to be Christian. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> right. So they stick it to the atheist. And somehow, like, a bunch of folks just, like, randomly show up. Like, they magically notice that they had taken the curtains. It's like it's like in a video game when you upgrade your base, and then just, like, all of a sudden, a bunch more yeah. people just show up. <laughs> How did like, they, they know I know? They this church exactly. like it's a base. <laughs> this church can now create flying units. Yeah. Ooh, okay. <laughs> And also, oh, let's go back to that music gag again, because that always works. Now Kathy has a tiny little harp, but she doesn't know how to play the harp at all. Why she would have that is kind of beyond me. By the end, she's going to be like blowing a kazoo and the kazoo is just not going to work. She's going to (laughs) like huffing her way into a kazoo. (laughs) Hey, Fonzie, can you elbow this kazoo for me for a second? Great. 
All right. So now he's going to go. He's going to go for the big fucking sermon. He goes, you know, there's so much evidence that supports Christianity. Anyway, uh, anyway, uh, let's all leave the church right now quick before anyone can ask for any of that. Do we have class outside? I need more Adderall. <laughs> yeah. The sermon. And we get an atheist guy. Oh, evidence. I'm sad. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> Quality shtick. Yeah. So, yeah, the whole thing here is going to be like evidence. And by which I mean, let's go out and help people. That's evidence. Yeah, right. He's like, Christianity is a religion of action. We're like Indiana Jones, but with God instead of a whip, guys. Let's go. I love the um, the honest response from evil Andrew Torres, where he like says, Christianity is a religion of action. He's like, is it? Is it? Is it really? I mean, <laughs> we haven't done a lot up to this point. <laughs> So they all they all leave to go do Christian shit. And I'm thinking to myself, like, I, I so want like a montage of like a abortion clinic bombing and like, you know, mm -hmm. rallying against a pride parade or something. <laughs> they walk outside the church. It's a bunch of atheists at the fence yelling at the Christians. <laughs> like, <right? laughs> Parenthood. And he's got a line where he's like, you know, if God calls us to go out and save the world, why are we having church inside? And you're like, oh, we, we've strayed into good point territory again. Uh, yeah, why, church why is a waste of church? space. What, <laughs> why does this exist? <laughs> what yeah. point did you think you were making? <laughs> Fuck your good works. Faith is all that counts. We're not Catholic. Uh, why do we say that in these movies? <laughs> uh, and they really drive it home with like the whole design because they're like, oh, actually helping people this is super novel let's play the novelty music as we wander yeah. out into our yeah. novel helping people <laughs> activity <laughs> uh, oh. you're giving the game away folks this is yeah. too meta <laughs> all right so they all wander off to do some good and then the atheist comes up to jack and he's like hey that evidence you were talking about is there any chance at all you could provide any one real shred of it and he's like yep there sure is <laughs> Let me pull this shit out of mere Christianity. Here we go. Yeah, here it is. Here it is. All the evidence right here. This overwhelming fucking mountain of evidence. Why would the apostles die for a lie? There it is. Yep. And <laughs> an atheist guy, <laughs> he goes like full goodwill hunting. He's like, oh, Lee Strobel. Yeah, I've read Vickers too. You want to <laughs> plagiarize the whole fucking thing? Or do you have an original idea of your own? <laughs> this person, I mean, the author of this movie clearly only read mere Christianity. Like, this is an argument straight from mere Christianity. Like, he didn't get to the Strobel and the McDowell. That's a little, that's heavy lifting is what I'm saying. Yeah. Like, Actually, yeah, good point. Do you want to plagiarize Lee Strobel plagiarizing? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. yeah. exactly. You're right. But of course, my immediate response is, who would die for a lie? I'm like, uh, well, let's see. Uh, Heaven's Gate, uh, Branch Davidians, um, yeah. fucking, fucking Jonestown. <laughs> well, this yeah, is and, not a good argument. Right. That's the fucked up thing is, number one, it's a terrible <laughs> argument. But number two, we have no evidence that any of the apostles died this martyr's death that they're selling, right? Yeah. So, like... It's a bad argument that does isn't even supported by historical evidence. Or they were stupid and religious, which is people do that. Yeah. Somebody died for Jesus eventually. <laughs> no, this is the point at which atheist dude really fails us. I feel like up until this point, he was like doing a decent half ass job of like, here's the objections. And and like now it's like, oh, I, I don't have an immediate response. I can't think of any of the people who've died because of lies at any point <laughs> yeah, in human exactly. history. <laughs> I can't think of that ever happening in history. Bye. Yep. And then also, by the way, you know what this movie needs is a new wacky character, right? So this is what I was going to say. Yeah. Mm, so this yeah. is where we're going to meet Hollywood Harry. Hollywood Harry serves no goddamn function in this movie except... Like if the if the narcoleptic guy's asleep, we have a second head to pop up from a pew. Well, and except to be a really dark, terrifying mirror of Robert G. Lee, who wrote this, because he's like, I'm Hollywood Harry. I was warm up comic for Wings, the sitcom in 1989. I have no money except for. The Kickstarter that we just for this movie you gave me $8. And yeah, my note is absolutely, I smell the writer of these non-jokes. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> and the character is he's homeless, and so he gets to move into the church. And I'm like, yep, I absolutely think that you were involved in the writing of this production. Yeah, uh, yep. I believe that. Oh, Harry G. Lee has lived in a pew. I guarantee <laughs> 
Oh, I feel so bad because he's Robert like, G. Lee. Sorry, yeah. Robert G. Lee. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I confused him with Hollywood Harry. Yeah, it's yeah, it's easy to do. All right. And so now we get we get date night. It's date night for Jack and Julie. He's taking her out to the place they live for a date. Mm-hmm. Well done, yep. man. That'll get you fucked. <laughs> Beauty in the douche. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, he strung together some Christmas lights around the dining area and lit some candles. That's shit, dude. That's just, even by the standards of Christian movies. Right, with with the homeless guy playing the candlestick at this point. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then Harry shows up to do Eli's French accent and take their order. <laughs> food stick. I have Food stick for for two. Food stick. <laughs> Who's looking for food stick, please? <laughs> Jesus. So he wanders up, and then he okay. Now Jack has a chart that he's made up of all the cool stuff he wants to do to church it up. And here's the fucked up thing. Okay, <laughs> this is not intentional. The thing, the idea that he has is to exploit the labor of homeless people who don't know any better. Mm-hmm. Right. This was the, this. The, Church slavery that happened yes, last month in, in California. The real news. Yes, exactly. In California. Yes, exactly. Yep. That's his fucking yep. idea. He's like, what if we just let all the homeless people live here and then they could just work for us for free? <laughs> we probably wouldn't get, you know, an expose about us for like three more years. Yes. <laughs> I- I'm getting the feeling that y'all are from your tone negative about this choice. <laughs> and like, as a cult leader, I'm curious. I, I want to get a little bit of feedback. Yeah. <laughs> Why? Like, why is the Project Mayhem turn not the right move for him at this particular point? Like, bed bunks are an important step. His his name was Robert G. Lee. <laughs> and I love too because they got to give the wife something to do, right? He's like, and I came up with a great idea for what you can do. You can give all the single moms in the neighborhood makeovers, and then they'll be prettier, so they'll get better jobs. That's yep. literally what the guy fucking says. Solid Christian logic. Just yep. straight Whoa. down the line. Good stuff. Employment counseling. Take off your glasses. <laughs> Done. End of lesson. If you put your hair Wait, up. Shake your hair. Maybe take a pencil out. Can you put a pencil in? Now take it out. It's- no. Pick up that jug of water, but like super hot. Like just reach for that jug of water. Ah. <laughs> <sighs> All right, so Jack cheerily heads into his office the next day, but damn it if the bad guys, the short-haired lady and her husband aren't there waiting for him uh, to yell at him for all that. Mr. and Mrs. Slide Whistle down. Yeah, yeah, exactly. They got to yell at him for all of that (laughs) taking Christianity on the road shit that he was doing. He needs to be a traditional pastor. Yep, and I wanted this moment to be prefaced by the sign just being like I checked out 40 minutes ago what the fuck did I miss like where, where are we at this point? <laughs> I went off and got the high signs just like, we didn't hit our kickstarter <laughs> <laughs> Credits. Uh, yeah no and the shrew woman right Ruth Bader Ginsburg Skecky is is threatening her him for being too positive and not financially functional enough and I just want like a giant like Pharisees sign just like flashing and pointing at her <laughs> for the folks in the back who are getting it I just want yeah to understand. exactly <laughs> they will make a clearly anti-semitic Pharisees remark later <laughs> yes they will know. absolutely they will all right so we wrap that scene and then he has to go int- introduce his indentured servitude church model to the whole gang yeah. And there's this law. Lo- there's this long bit where everybody's going like, right? But wouldn't we need permits for that? And they're like, well, we could lie about it, right? And that doesn't like lead to it. It's not like they learn their lesson about this or anything. They just have a whole scene where they're all just like, yeah, but we can't legally do that. And they're like, yeah, we just won't tell the government we're doing it. No, it's fine. We're we're a church. I don't know if you're clear about this. There's no <laughs> rules. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, that's the most on point thing in this entire movie. Yep. Like, I don't understand what your concern is here. Like, this is 100% accurate amidst a bunch of incomprehensible nonsense. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Christians can do whatever the fuck they want and ignore the law. Yep. No. Yep. I'm no, a- they're just like, yeah, I mean, involuntary servitude. So, I mean, the math checks out. That sounds great. <laughs> yep. Um, can we do that? Totally. Yeah. yeah we're a church. Riffra. Yeah. Right. Red Riffra. No, we sincerely we can believe we can do we that. Fuck we sincerely held. <laughs> we're sincerely holding these servants. In a true follow through of the nature of Christianity too. like 
when you have these like individuals, all of which have like five brain cells a piece to rub together in this brainstorming session of what we can do when we have literally no laws, their bright idea is dance party. Yep. <laughs> Just like, <laughs> yep. Fresno loves a church rave or something, I guess. I, and, and look, this scene <laughs> serves no goddamn purpose. They're like, oh, we're out of money. How will we make money? Dance rave. Now, the only, as near as I can tell, the only reason this scene exists is so that we can see that they made the FBI guy, the, the only, well, one of the only two black characters, the fucking bouncer. Yeah. At the rave party, right? <sighs> And again, somebody comes up and he's like, hey, is this legal? And he's like, yeah, we uh, we don't care. It's a church again. Yeah, no, it's Sunday. He was like, it's technically after midnight on Saturday. So all this alcohol we're serving to kids is actually technically legal. Yes. <laughs> yep. You know, it's the most activity that happens over the course of the movie. So, like, I'm, I'm going to give it a pass on this. Like, yeah. No, yeah, I think it's great. I think, like, if more churches would just be dance rave clubs, I think we would be in a better world. That's true. No, you're um, right. You're right. I, I, I'm I on board with shit that on them when they get it right. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So now it's time for a montage of more churching. The big evil lawyer guy is secretly a nice guy, and he's getting singing lessons. They bought a ramp for the old lady with the walker that kept telling him that she was fine and didn't need a ramp. And Julie is giving away all her designer clothes voluntarily now. So she'll be naked for the remainder of the film, I guess. I'm on board with that. I mean, hungover yeah. sign is like sure. shitty white person parties are shitty. Like, you <laughs> know, we, we, we've given up at this point in the movie. So like, fuck it, whatever. Like, let's do it. Everyone gives away their clothes and is naked. Great. Yeah. <laughs> yep. All right. So now Jack tries sermoning again. And this sermon is going to be about how relatable the disciples are. He starts doing shtick. About two minutes into this, and then they're like, yeah, no, we got to cut this. We got to cut this. Don't linger here. Right? Because this is the one where he's going like, uh, ah, I bet it was, when the disciples were sitting around there like, huh, like this Judas guy, right? Am I right? What's up with him? Yeah. And just, What's up with all these one hour photo booths? <laughs> And this is also where we're getting clearly there are air quotes when I say character development of <laughs> secret agent Shaq, who like is is getting into the mood by like now wearing Hawaiian shirts and is yeah, like unbuttoning what? like this is their idea of character development. And, and it's frustrating because this feels like a resolution montage, like this whole helping, you know, woman get up the stairs thing like we could cut right here and call it a day but there's 30 fucking minutes of this movie left so oh my god is there yeah, well yeah that's... because they suddenly at this moment <laughs> remember the plot of the goddamn movie mm -hmm. right they had lost track of it for a fucking hour but then he, he goes into his office the next day or whatever and the news wants to come and cover what they're doing and he's like nope i'm in witness protection i just remember that's the plot of the movie <laughs> so no news stuff <laughs> yeah, and like starts to do this like shtick where he's like running away from the news, like Jim Carrey style. And there's just like they start running together so many plot lines. There was a point where where like atheist guy is tampering with their mail and stuff. <laughs> there's just like I just feel like they had like a list of shticks that they still needed to get in, and they're like, oh shit, time's running out. Yeah, Let's right, right. Only thirty minutes <laughs> left, guys. Get these fucking shticks going. Just you know. Again, I feel like as our podcast, we're really carrying that forward and that the quantity yes. of sticks that we you have. You let to me cover. get in my shirt bit where I pull my shirt over my head and you kind of only see a little bit. Of my, and I do my divey rolls. I do my dive rolls. That's my thing. So I need to avoid the news. We're keeping this. Yeah. And is the mafia scouring local news in Fresno? Is that an issue? That uh, clearly, mm. clearly they are. I mean, they have alien technology in terms of shooting people. I assume they have sort of yeah, sort of <laughs> right, right, exactly. Oh, just drones. some AI to to, yeah. to scour every single news channel that's okay, exactly. the world exactly. building Stupid is question. not is not at the top of this particular movie. <laughs> no, withdrawn, <laughs> withdrawn. Yeah, great writing. <laughs> All right, so yeah, so they they've got this scene like so the news guys show up, they try to run them off, and then the, in the next scene they're all sitting around watching the newscast to see how bad it was. And, like, we basically have the newscaster going, like, yeah, it seems like this dude must be in, like, witness protection or something. Back to you, Phil. <laughs> <laughs> this is uh, not Jack Jacobs. It's Jack, Jake, Jack, Jake. Here's, here's a side-by-side <laughs> -side picture. They look identical, but they're not. <laughs> We're the news. Uh, 
Yeah, and so the FBI agent now is mad at him, right? He's because apparently he watches the Fresno local news as well, and he's like, "Jack, you were just on TV. Your cover's blown. You've got to go." So Jack's like, "No, no, I don't. I can stay here, and you could just endanger more FBI agents in protecting an unwilling and uncooperative witness, right?" <laughs> Right? Sure, for Jesus. Ripper says you have to give me an army of FBI bodyguards. It says it. You've already given me a pile of unmarked bills. Like, how much farther yeah, is this down right, the road? Right. Like, yeah, if, I, if I just shout Riffra at you, will you give me things? Is that how Yeah, actually, they, they will. Yep. Yeah. All right. So now Mrs. Fogg, that's the evil, short-haired, shrew mm-hmm. Skeksis, mm-hmm. she shows up it and she's like, hey, I saw you on the news, and then we decided to, for the first time, just discover who you are and it turns out you don't have a seminary degree (laughs) you're not licensed to practice (laughs) talking about fiction lying behind a podium we're both people we're both people of jesus law they say at one point they're like we can't have a liar at the pulpit and i'm like that's really all that's your only choice guys only (laughs) only can have we are making way more money, though, with the liar at the pulpit. That's yeah. hmm, technically illegal, though. <laughs> it's such a painfully obvious wind up again, too. Where yeah. It's like, well, we've got a little bit of movie left and the lawyers are the antagonists. It, sure. Question mark. So, yeah. like, we're just going to, you know, like it's even worse than like watching like a Marvel movie. Like, I feel like a Marvel movie, we get at least predictable banter and a fight scene. And there's just yeah. none, of, none of that's going to happen here. It's just this like this movie definitely needed a fight scene. Right? Needed a I feel like the antagonist beat. was the time bar for me. <laughs> <laughs> I was just watching it angry. The time remaining. <laughs> yeah. There was a lot of like, oh, God, I've only gone three minutes, but I, I'm going to get up and I'm going to grab food or I'm going to I'm going to do yeah. something that isn't a watching of, this movie for a lot minutes. of breaks. Yeah, so, okay, so that they tell him that there's going to be a big congregational meeting where they're going to decide whether to fire him or not. So he walks away super sad. He's too sad to high-five Danny, and he's too sad to fuck his wife, and he's too sad to speak loud enough for the goddamn microphones to pick him up. He's like in a pastoral fugue state of sorts, yeah. like he's yeah. just muttering mere Christianity <laughs> to himself. <laughs> like, who would, who would believe a liar? Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so now he goes to think towards that giant cross. And apparently, like, the filmmakers got well into filming this scene, and they're like, oh, we can't even hear his thoughts. We're going to have to have another actor come up and talk to him, huh? So his wife comes up, and she's like, hey, is everything okay? And he's like, no, I should probably give up, huh? Seeing as how we're in Act 3, and I have to reach my lowest point. Yep, and I have, yeah, Dark Knight of the Soul stick check um yep. but I, i'm honestly I'm like these are my notes i i want to be honest with you i wrote this in real time i'm honestly surprised the black dude didn't show up to give him magical advice and then he did <laughs> yes <laughs> and then i thought yes! he was gonna be the wife but then the black dude pops up out of the pews yes! to give us a little bit of magic black dude oh uh, it was so it was everything it was everything for me <laughs> I'm, a dub- I'm, a, I'm a double atheist now because of this show but like it's great. It's fine. Yeah. I believe in negative one gods. <laughs> Go fuck yourself. So now, so now all the ancillary characters come into the room to, to, you know, to offer him their support. But he admits he doesn't really have a seminary degree. And, and then they're like, you know what? Jesus didn't have a seminary degree either. Honestly, if you think about it, there's literally no way to be underqualified for this job. Yep. No, he had a rabbinical degree. I'm, I'm pre- I mean, he was a rabbi. I'm pretty sure. I mean, he, like, he was actually. <laughs> I, I don't know how. I don't know how the accredita- accreditation worked at that particular moment. <laughs> history, right, right. But, but like, he was preaching was in the from, fucking. It was from the University of Phoenix. So oh, like, okay. Eh. I don't know. He was you preaching know. in the fucking temples when he was 11 or whatever. So He's yeah, a, it's a little bit of a protege. Is what I'm saying. Yeah. 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 I mean, Dr. Kevorkian had an MD. It's not all about <laughs> no. paper. But, like, it's okay because, like, this dude is the white savior, bro. So, like, he can just go into, like, this spice trance Christian fugue state and, like, come out the <laughs> perfect pastor, I guess, or something. <laughs> all right. So they all try to cheer him up. They don't manage to. He He's still sad. He walks off. Julie chases him down, tells him not to give up. And then he suddenly has a revelation. He realizes what the combination on that safe is. But the way they say it <laughs> oh, made it Jesus. sound so dumb. It was like he's like, oh, I have a revelation. I think I know what it means to be Christian. 
Mm. I'm just like Moses. And I was like, Moses the Christian? What the <laughs> right. fuck are you talking about? <laughs> but apparently the pastor who died of the heart attack at the very beginning that he took over from wrote down on a little post-it on top of that safe, which probably should have been a clue to you that maybe mm-hmm. that was involved in the combination. Yep. Yep. <laughs> but it said like Moses, Noah, fish and loaves or whatever yeah. or something, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah. yeah. My, my my deep Christian insight is I solved a Resident Evil 1 level puzzle. Yeah, oh. right, right, exactly. <laughs> These words are related to <laughs> numbers and the numbers are attached to the safe. Yeah. Oh, it's all coming together well, now, people. The characters did not solve that puzzle very well though. They <laughs> No. Had some trouble. No, once they figured out the fucking key to the thing, they still fuck it up. She makes a suggestion, then he puts in a different number than what she just suggested. Okay, Mm -hmm. in fairness, her suggestion was 40, 40, 40. And I think the movie was going for that was correct, except we see him putting in 8, 5 again. (laughs) 8, 5 was the answer, it turned out. It's just 8, 5. This is why co-op games are the worst. No, dude, he's putting it. I did put it. No, you did it. I saw it on my screen. (laughs) All right. So now they have giant stacks of cash, but guess what they're going to do with it? They're not going to run away with it. They're going to take the money that they just stole from Mm. the federal government and pay off this church's loan. Well, of course, we're first going to do a should we keep it shtick because we can't not do a should we keep it shtick. Well, no, I'm sorry. She, the wife, is going to do a should we keep it shtick because women are evil. Because women be tempting. Am I I, I right, people? (laughs) Women be tempting. (laughs) Yeah, and and there's supposed to be this moment where, like, she's supposed to be greedy because she's having second thoughts about giving all their money to a church that was too damn dumb to make a tax-free production costless (laughs) business work. (laughs) And and I like that they come, like, the moments where Christianity touches with other parts of reality like they come to the loan officer at the bank and they're like we brought our bag of money to pay off the money loan in your money system and he's like yep (laughs) totally fine let me take your stacks of money (laughs) the banker was so confused too he was just like you're handing me 75 grand in cash and you don't you don't want me to smash the church with a wrecking ball? That's what you just said? I just want to be clear. Cool. That's not how it works. Yeah, also, you've never told me which particular loan you wanted to pay off, so I'm just going to go alphabetically. <laughs> what? Let me go to the loan page. Tappy, 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 tappy. Insert your giant pile of money. Tappy, 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 tappy. He just hits the dollar sign over and over yep. again 75,000 times. Wait, I'm entering this in. All right, so yeah, now now they go back to church penniless, and the wife is like, so when are you going to tell everybody in the movie that you paid off the loan at the very end of the movie, you think? And he goes, I'm not going to because I'm Christian now. I'm humble. Let's talk for a, another long minute about how humble I am and my humility. <laughs> I'm humble. So that doesn't mean that we can do community organizing with individuals and help them understand our financial situation and have the no, progress no, no. that we're making no, as a group. No, no. <laughs> and I love, and of course, she's just too bitchy to understand things like humility. Mm-hmm. And we got to do like a, like, do you love me? Let's stay forever together forever shtick as like the solution to, I don't want to have this conversation about the financial situation. Yeah. Cause Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> Just follow my lead. Did you read Timothy? You, you don't have a choice, as it turns out. You don't get to yeah. talk about the math. You're a woman. Do you want a woman? No? Yeah, penis okay. equals zero. Because Sorry, we're math, Christians, when I said so math, define it's, it. it's like numbering. Penises. Does that make sense? <laughs> of course it does. Follow my lead. Yeah, right. Like He says, just this once, honey, follow my lead. And I'm like, dude, she's in witness protection because of you. Right. Like even in your own fucking movie, the whole goddamn inciting incident was her following your goddamn lead to have a trucking company that was part of a drug cartel that you didn't realize. Yeah, you're an idiot. Right. Yeah. Forgive harder. Yeah. So now, thankfully, we make it to the big finale scene. It's time for the big congregational meeting to determine Jack's fate. So it starts things off with like Danny yelling into the. PA system, today's going to be sucky and shitty and crappy because this is the end of the movie and I'm upset. Yep. A dude's going to be crucified. Lots of people show up. 
Christianity punchline. <laughs> like, yeah, that is their religion. You're right. They love to see a show. Line out the door like a nightclub. <laughs> yeah, a yeah, right. So the evil lady comes up and she's like, I'd like to start off by being a bitch. And Jack says, well, I'm Christian now, so I'd like to start with a prayer. And they're like, damn, damn, point for him, oh. I guess. Oh, good move, bro. Yeah. I'm not even sure what the conflict is about, but I think a song is going to win it. Yep. I don't know. Yep. We yep. set up the thing with the guy singing. I don't get it, yep. but go. Yep. Oh, no, they're going to fucking sing. That's my notes here. Yep. So the husband of the shrew lady and Kathy, the music lady who isn't a good enough musician to properly use a cassette tape player are going to sing together. And I will say their duet is lovely. It doesn't rhyme, but it's lovely. This was the high point of the film, I thought. I'm mostly confused yeah. because, like, after all the shticks about audiovisual equipment, where is the fucking amplification coming from? <laughs> right. Yeah, or the background music. The microphones. <laughs> where are those fucking microphones, people? <laughs> and, and by the way, the duet is so lovely that we see the atheist starting to believe in God now. The one Native American tear rolls down his yeah, eyes. Right. He watches. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Atheism be corrupted before him. Yeah. All right. So the duet ends, and now Mrs. Fogg, the true lady, she's going to address the congregation, and she motions that Jack should be fired, but but nobody will second her motion except for her <laughs> cuck husband, who she makes second it. Right. Yeah. I just want them to like cut ahead to the air bud sequence where they're like, oh, it doesn't matter that he's a dog. He can still be the pastor. It's fine. <laughs> There's nothing in the rule book. Yeah. <laughs> I thought everybody's going to like get up on the pews and do the old captain. My yeah, captain right. Thing. Right. No, yeah, exactly. Something like that. Or just like Donna Martin graduates. <laughs> no, nope, that's not a two and oh, Sorry. Sorry. Got swept up. No, but no, instead somebody physically throws a book at her. Yep. And I'm like, I, I wanted it to like clock her in the head and then for her to like go on Fox <laughs> and like complain about how Antifa had given her a brain bleed and like this is cancel culture run amok. And that's no. <laughs> they never take the jokes far enough is what I'm saying. No. Or it just like hits her right in the chest, but she's got a Bible in her breast pocket. That blocks the, Bible. <laughs> the Bible gets dented by the other Bible. <laughs> yeah. And the room just disappears into nothing and the movie's over. Oh, oh. that would have been awesome. Yeah. But no. So now we have to give some kind of agency to that large black gentleman that's been standing in the background of, of every scene. Payoff. We need payoff, sir. Bring us the payoff. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> he hears Mrs. Fogg talking about how Jack is, should not be the pastor anymore. And he goes off on her and he starts walking up to her as though he's going to physically assault her saying, you know why so many people avoid church today? And I'm like, ooh, ooh, it's the kid rape. And he's like, it's because of people like you. It's like, oh, sure, it was the kid yeah. rape or maybe the homophobia or the fact that it's demonstrably false. Or Are we making a list? Bigotry, 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 <laughs> fantasy football, bigotry. Fantasy <laughs> period, yeah. <laughs> I've put up with your kind all my life, says the large black person, by which he means the people who don't like music. Yeah. <laughs> and this is, this is emphasized by him physically threatening this tiny shell of a person. Like, yeah. Yeah. Yep. And this is this is weird because at this point, like my wife has gotten home from work while I'm trying to make it through the end of this god awful movie. And like she's already confused from the singing onward. But at this point where the <laughs> large black man is physically threatening the tiny white woman as the climax of the movie, she's like just in slack jawed horror. And like she doesn't understand what is even happening at this point. It's not like context would have helped. But yeah, no. No, it wouldn't have. Yeah. All I could all I could say was shtick, darling. It's it's <laughs> this is shtick. I know it doesn't look like shtick. This is <laughs> it's confusing because this did include an anti-Semitic slur here. It did. So, yeah, yeah. Shtick is not the perfect word, maybe. Yeah. Uh -huh. But yeah, shtetl shtetl shtick. We call that. That's <laughs> shtickle. Yeah. This is where he closes his big speech to the Ruth Bader Ginsburg character, and he's like, "You pretend to be a Christian." But you're just a G he legalistic Pharisee. <laughs> really? Legalistic Pharisee yeah. from New York? What? Yeah, right. Okay. <laughs> what? One of those globalistic legalistic yeah, Pharisees. Yeah, exactly. 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 Mm -hmm. Pro Israel. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> you look funny. I just want to say I think you're funny. So, yeah. And then the black guy gets a clap. 
from the evil gangster character that we've never met in the movie. That's right. They found him. That being the bad guys have found Jack. Yeah, The gangsters yep. show up to beat up Jesus because that's Christianity. That's, that's where we yeah. are. And the gangster's like, hey, you might remember me from the following <laughs> flashback. Here it is. In case we forgot. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And now time for some brazen midday violence in front of a large number of witnesses, because that's how organized crime works, I guess. Like you want you want a lot of people to. Right, right. The idea is that then all of you guys will have to go into witness protection. Then I'll kill all of you and all the people who witnessed that. Eventually, the FBI just gets it's like a DDoS attack at a certain point, right? <laughs> like fractals of this just spreading out in every direction. <laughs> He ends, up, he ends up killing all the Christians in like the third episode of this. So that, that's great in the sense that, oh, like, yeah, there you, you know, go. it works out. <laughs> also, OK, so I love this goddamn moment. There's a kid in the movie that we've never met. Right. He's just been in the background a couple of times. Danny's the youth director. So there has to be a youth there somewhere. Yeah, he's all getting molested by Eli for most of yeah, the movie. Pretty much the situation. Yeah. That's what you get for taking a day off, Eli. So the kid escapes. Now, here's the kid's bright idea. He could go to the phone and call 911 or hey it's 2016 use the phone he's carrying with him to call 911 but instead he goes up to the big pa that danny's been doing his good morning fresno shit on and says hey someone call 911 all of fresno <laughs> one of you decide yes, exactly amongst yourselves. decide amongst yourselves <laughs> to call 911 you're not familiar with kitty genovese is what you're saying is that <laughs> the, the fusion of responsibility it's an important ethical problem that he would have learned about if he hadn't been taught christianity instead of ethics is what i'm saying <laughs> and then okay correct me if i'm wrong here but while all the christians are fucking around praying that jesus will save them the atheist guy comes and knocks the bad guy the fuck out right Yep, the atheist is the hero of this movie. Yeah, one hundred percent. Okay, but there's a, again, there's, there's a one scene before accident. this that we have to talk about where he like he has a like Jesusy. I realize you have no power moment before like the guy gets knocked out. Yeah, uh -huh. and I, I just want to highlight this because numerous mass shootings within churches suggest that guns do in fact work inside of churches. There's yeah, not, there's not a shield <laughs> system. Do not take this as evidence that you can survive bullets yeah. inside of churches. <laughs> Do not take survival advice from a Christian movie. <laughs> yeah. Because this is where Jack, the, the pastor, is like, you have no power here. This is a house of God. Yep. And then nothing happens. Nope. And he's just like, fuck, I thought I like <laughs> asked a spell or something. I thought lightning would hit you or something. Yeah, it's like a Jedi mind trick, but but like they steal your robots afterwards. <laughs> like they're just yeah. like, no, that didn't work, old person. We're taking your fucking robots, you noob. And then I, I, I wrote in my notes, I'm like, uh oh, fight scene. But before I was done with that, it was over. Uh, the police show up like one second after the kid yells on the PA. I love this moment, too, because they show like the gangsters henchmen running outside and the cop goes, you're completely surrounded. Give up. But they only have the one car. There's the one car. Yeah. But like to be accurate, like it is fair that it is a white neighborhood, apparently, except for the people outside of the church. And so obviously they would show up to the white church as fast as possible. Like, I do true. believe that like yeah. they were on the on the on the on the stick for that one. Yeah. Yeah. So, all right, so FBI guy comes in. Apparently, at some point, I missed this, but apparently the big black guy got shot. Don't worry, it's just in the chest. Mm -hmm. He'll be fine. Yeah, it's good for <laughs> right? a laugh. It's a, yeah. it's a, it's a wounding, so we, we can make jokes about it. Yeah. It's, it's still shtick material is what I'm saying. Nothing, nothing bad enough is going to happen <laughs> that we can't, we can't make a shtick out of it, even though someone died in this movie earlier. Yeah, exactly. No, he even says, because the guy's holding his chest, and he's like, oh, you took a bullet, huh? And he's like, yeah, he says, I'm sure you'll be fine, but we can't, we won't be able to save that shirt, huh? Huh? You got <laughs> shot in the chest and I'm already kidding, huh? Uh, huh? I know that's your favorite mustard yellow shirt. You like Dwight Schrute. <laughs> yeah. I know you like Dwight Schrute. Do you start to notice that, like, all of the extras in this movie are starting to get pretty exasperated at this point? Like, yeah. they're, they're ready for the end of filming? <laughs> yeah. Yep. Also, podcasts. Yep. Yeah, exactly, yep. exactly. All right, well, we'll hurry it up. Okay, so... <laughs> Mrs. Fogg, after this all happens, still wants to vote on firing him, but damn it if her husband doesn't go off on her and make her into the obedient woman she was meant to be when God designed her, right? 
Like that yep. is literally that's the big payoff of this is that she finally listens to shut up and do what her husband says. Oh, literally, yeah. yeah. It's like Taming of the Shrew. It's just literally Taming of the Shrew. Like we didn't, yeah. yeah. We, we didn't Absolutely. Very Shut your mouth, woman. Timothy two eleven. <laughs> Boom. End of movie. Yeah. Yeah. The the slut got in her lane. Why can't you get in your lane, woman? Is what we're saying. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And then, of course, we obviously we have to see that this atheist is starting to rethink that whole God being dead thing. Uh, he manages to stay atheist, which, like, is the only miracle of this movie is that, like, he doesn't convert on the spot. Yeah. When, when people are not murdered in this church. <laughs> it's because he's the guy who paid five hundred dollars yeah. and he was just like, fuck uh, you, I'm going to say what I want. Uh, oh, you know what? <laughs> they were like. I bet you still atheist. He's like, yeah, I'm the hero. Do you remember from moments ago? Oh, my I'm, God. Are you still Christian? You tried. <laughs> I bet you tried to do a magic spell and that guy got shot. Are you still Christian is uh, a more important. Question. So yeah. I, I think I, I think I figured it all out. So what was supposed to happen in the script is he was supposed to say, I, you have no power over me. And then like God was supposed to intervene. But the atheist actor that paid five hundred dollars was like, fuck that went and knocked the actor unconscious. Just to end 